just press the button. Three minutes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Is it coming through on that computer and not your? This one. Well, do you want to? Um...
Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Planning Committee. I'm the Chairman, Councillor Pauline Hazel. To begin the meeting, there are a few matters of housekeeping. A risk assessment, included, including COVID-19 risks, has been undertaken for this meeting. Hand sanitizer, wipes and masks are available. Masks should be worn whilst arriving and moving around the room, unless you have a medical condition, a medical exemption, I beg your pardon. Can I remind everybody that seating is socially distanced with two metres between each seat? Please do not move the chairs. Masks can be removed when seated. Action in the event of an emergency. There are no practice alarms planned for this evening. So if an alarm sounds, please evacuate the town hall by going down the main staircase or the back staircase to the high street and then to the car park behind the town hall in St. Ronald Street. This meeting is being recorded for live broadcast over the internet on the council's YouTube channel and will also be available afterwards. Please would speakers use microphones at all times and speak directly into the microphone and would participants both those joining us online and in the moot hall, please mute the microphones when not speaking. Members of the committee will introduce themselves, starting from my right, then the rest of the committee who are sitting opposite. Good evening, I'm Councillor Peter Chillingworth, uh, Rural North, and I'm substituting for Councillor Robert Davidson tonight. Councillor Jackie McLean from Markstone Lane Ward. Councillor Jeremy Hagen, Stanway Ward, substituting for Councillor Roger Mannion. Um, Councillor Martin Warns, Beer Church Ward. Uh, Councillor Mike Lilly, uh, Old Heath the High from Rowhedge Ward. Good evening, Lynn Barton, Shrub End Ward. Good evening, Councillor Helen Chuas in Anne and St John's Ward. Thank you. In attendance here, or via Zoom, are planning officers Annabelle Cooper, Eleanor Moss, John Miles, Chris Harden, and Simon Cairns. Democratic Services officers are here for procedural matters. Members of the committee may use electronic devices to access their meeting papers and visitors are welcome to use mobile phones and other devices, including cameras. But please use them discreetly, set them to silent and do not use voice or camera flash functions. We may have a break at eight o'clock, subject to the items remaining. There are toilets on every floor in the building and there is an induction loop in this room. This is a quasi-judicial committee which makes decisions based on material planning considerations following the laws of the land and the policies of the council. If the committee is minded to refuse an application, members will use such considerations and evidence that will stand up in a court of law. The material planning considerations are listed in the committee's agenda. Has everyone who wishes to speak registered their name? If not, please do so now. No one's indicating, Chairman. Thank you. If anyone has a petition they wish to present to me on any of the items on the agenda this evening, please do so now. No one's indicating, Chairman. Thank you. You have heard that we have two substitutions. Councillor Hagen for Councillor Mannion and Councillor Chillingworth for Councillor Davidson. Excuse me, Chair. I've, just a quick one. We're, we're short of one councillor. Councillor Oxford is not present. No, he hasn't, and I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Councillor Davidson sends his apologies. He's not, sorry, Councillor Oxford sends his apologies. He's not, not well, Chairman. Well, um, Councillor Oxford 
Gerard is usually the sub for Councillor Beverly Oxford. So she should be the one who sends in apologies and, and not him, I would have thought. I, I, I agree, Councillor Lily, um, but Councillor Gerard Oxford was going to substitute, but he's now obviously not able to be here. There are no urgent items for this evening. Declarations of Interest Committee. I'll go first. I have a non-pecuniary interest in item 7.1. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, It is 7.1. Um, I have a, a non-pecuniary interest in 7.1 because I am a supporter of the Udo Road Tennis Centre. Thank you. Uh, any other declarations, committee? Um, yes, Chair. Councillor have... Barton. Yes, yeah, sorry, same thing. Non-pecuniary interest because of the 106 funding that might come towards the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I have a declarable pecuniary interest in item 7.1. Please advise me whether you wish me to leave the room and come back after, after the committee have deliberated on this item. Um, may I have some direction on that? Should Councillor yes, Warren? Yes, Councillor Warren should leave the uh, meeting room for item uh, 7.1, Chairman, and we'll, we'll bring him back when, uh, that meeting's, when that item's over. Thank you very much. Item six committee is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of July. Do you all approve? Um, thank you, Chair. I'm not able to vote as I wasn't present at the meeting. Okay. The rest Me of the committee, are you happy to approve? I also wasn't yeah, present. Approve. <laughs> yeah, same here, I wasn't okay. uh, at that last okay. meeting. I think that is approved by the committee members who were here. Thank you. I will now go through the agenda items one by one. Item 7.1 is land south of Beer Church Hall Road, Colchester in Shrub End Ward. It's recommended for approval subject to conditions and section 106 agreement. Presenting officer is Eleanor Moss. We have Mary Stuttle speaking against via Zoom. And speaking for, we have Stuart Wilshire, who is from Persimmon Homes. And we also have visiting councillor, Councillor Harris, via Zoom. Item 7.2, land south of West Burgholt Cricket Club, Colchester Road, West Burgholt. Outline application for up to 18 dwellings with access to be determined and all other matters reserved. Recommended for approval subject to legal agreement. Presenting officer, Annabel Cooper. We have no member speaking against. We have the agent, Andrew Black, who will only speak if there is an objection. Councillor McLean. Mentioning the West Burgot Cricket Club, I have a non pecuniary interest because Fiona lives opposite Fiona McLean, my daughter. Okay, so big your pardon, I should mention that. Thank you. Item 7.3 The former Lookers Renault Garage in Military Road, Colchester, recommended for approval subject to prior execution of a Section 106 agreement. Presenting officer, John Miles. Public speaking against is Catherine Spindler and uh, Richard Clifford will read her statement. We have no public speaking for, and we have Councillor Cope via Zoom. Item 7.4, land between seven and 15 Marlow Way, Colchester, Demolition of brick boundary wall to Lexton Manor. Construction of three four-bedroom detached houses, each with integral garage, 
plus individual private driveways connecting to Marlow Way. A retention of two TPO trees, it's recommended for approval. The presenting officer is Chris Harden. We have Simon Sorrell speaking against. Four, we have Richard Pomery, the agent. And we have two visiting councillors, Councillor Buston and Councillor Lissimore. Item 7.5, open spaces, Pondfield Road, Colchester in St. John's Ward. It's the proposal for a palisade fencing along the railway line. We, it's recommended for approval. We have the presenting officer, Daniel Cooper, but we have no speakers for or against. Item eight, the Orchard Foxes Lane, Atesh Green. Discharge or revoke an existing section 106 agreement. And this committee, we need to agree to discharge an existing section 106 agreement. So, um, Mr. Clifford, can you, uh, is there anything that we can pass on block? Thank you, Chairman. If none of the members wish to call out 7.2 for discussion, you can agree in line with the officer recommendation at items 7.2 and 7.5. Committee, does anyone want to, to call out either of those items? So you're happy that we agree to this on block, they will be approved? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. So we now begin with item 7.1. It's a may I ask Eleanor Moss to start off our proceedings, please. Thank you, Chair. So good evening, members, and good evening, everyone visiting here today. Yeah, so yes, we are at item 7.1, land south of Beerchurch Hall Road. The proposal is for 153 dwellings. The site here is outlined in red with other um, ownership of the applicant outlined in blue. This slide is a more detailed layout. We can see the layout of the proposed roads and the proposed dwellings of the Suds, which is there towards the south, and a play area which is more centrally located between the two plots over towards the west. The proposed access is the more westerly point, which you can see at the top of the screen. There is a temporary access, which is more easterly, which will be closed off. The temporary is just for construction only, and once the dwellings are completed, it will be closed off and turned into a turning head. So here we have a street scene, which is located centrally within the plot. Um, the majority of houses and dwellings on this site are two storey, going up to three and a half storey, which are located centrally here. And these are street scenes which are located more to the east of the site. The majority of the houses, as I said, are two storey. I'll just go through some elevations so members can understand the proposed design. These are spread out throughout the site. And this is block A, which previously mentioned is located centrally within the plot. Block B and Block C. So now on to some site photos. So this is standing at Beerchurch Hall Road and we are looking towards the site entrance, the proposed site entrance, excuse me. Um, towards the right hand side, you can see the construction entry site of the adjacent plot, which already has planning permission. And here we are standing in the application site. It's currently a field, as you can see. And we are looking back up north towards Beerchurch Hall Road with the existing dwellings there in the background. Uh, here we are looking towards the west, uh, where the aforementioned development site adjacent is currently under construction. 
And here we are looking towards the south. And this is a photograph towards the east of the site. You can see that it's quite well contained at the boundaries by existing vegetation, the majority of which is to be retained. And final photo from inside the site. So this is looking back up towards the north where the existing field entrance is. So we're back standing on Beer Church Hall Road now, looking towards the west. And this is looking directly towards the south at the application site. And this is looking up towards the east of Beer Church Hall Road. Uh, so the proposal is considered to be sustainable development. And as you are aware, it's allocated within the uh, emerging section two local plan for residential development. Uh, hearing sessions were back in April and we're expecting an update from the inspector soon as such this can be given considerable weight. Um, therefore, the pr principle of the proposal is considered to be acceptable and it's considered to be sustainable development. As such, it's recommended for approval and delegated to officer level as per the amendment sheet. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eleanor. Uh, we now have Mary Stuttle via Zoom, please. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I think everyone can hear me. Yes, we can. Lovely, thank you. Um, I'll keep it fairly brief. Beechurch Hall Road has become a very busy since the Solace Estate that has been built. And with this proposed site of 153 dwellings, 32 on the adjoining site and the 1,000 promised on the wicks, it will be a nightmare for local residents. Although already a 30 mile section, most drivers do not observe this and often speed up when they see you trying to join the road or turn into the mews. What madness, blocking off the temporary entrance at a location that is clear of any driveways and, and replace it with one located at a point where two estate roads and five mews discharge onto Beerchurch Hall Road. In the process, destroying 40 metres of trees and hedge to accommodate approximately a seven metre entrance, why? Leave the temporary entrance and make the other pedestrian only. This will also stop people turning left and then immediately right to get to the school twice a day. The adjoining site could keep their entrance. This would distribute the joining traffic more evenly along Beer Church Hall Road. The proposed plans lend themselves to an accident black spot. What assurances will we be given that the removal of the trees will be kept to a minimum and the devastation that was allowed on the adjacent site will not be allowed to take place? The more hedgerows we protect, the more pollution is taken off an area. The suggested toucan crossing is a bit of an overkill. Why not a simple zebra crossing, which would not result in the existing residents being subjected to further noise pollution? Two new bus stops to be installed in the vicinity of the new site, but no indication of where. Will this be forced again upon the existing member residents? Rat runs are still included in the rear of some properties. These can and do encourage antisocial behavior. I thought we had got rid of this outdated design years ago. Where are the new res residents going to sign on for a doctor? There is little, little capacity around. We struggle to get appointments now. In the discussions of this application, the only people that have been neglected are existing residents who live lives will be altered from a semi-rural situation at the edge of town to a built-up area to incorporate layer. Indeed, the adjoining site is called Layer Park. Why, do we build, why are we building more and more houses to accommodate people from outside of Colchester when little has been done to encourage enterprise in Colchester? Our town and, and centre and surrounding areas are extremely poor compared even to Clacton. It seems that the planners had no incentive to improve our town. All the levies that have been suggested to enhance amenities do not benefit the local people, old or new. Didn't COVID teach us anything? All we need for mind and body is wide open spaces. Please, please give consideration to the location of the site entrance and keep us safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stuttle, very much. Um, we now have... Um, Stuart Wilshire from Persimmon Homes to speak to us, please. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the committee this evening. Our site is identified as an allocated site in the Emerging Culture to Local Plan and therefore has been properly identified in the principle established for residential development. The development presented this evening consists of 153 dwellings which take the form of both private and affordable homes of a mix of apartments, terrace, ter semi-detached and detached dwellings. The policy compliant level of affordable housing will provide 46 new affordable homes of a mix that is supported by the Council's Housing Officer and which meets identified affordable needs in the borough. Throughout the application process, we have worked closely with the Council and statutory consultees, including extensive pre-application discussions to ensure that all the issues were addressed and to ensure that a very high level of design and layout is achieved as evident from the master plan and house types presented to you this evening and which is confirmed within your committee report. Within the design, we have sought to reflect architectural elements found within the local area and which will give it a distinctive feel and form and will complement the local vernacular. Our proposed layout has also been designed to ensure that green space is not only aesthetically pleasing but is also integrated throughout the proposed development. This includes the ribbon of native tree planting, which runs through the centre of the site, connecting green spaces and providing a natural feel to the built form. This will also provide significant biodiversity benefits, again as confirmed within your committee report. As well as the provision on site for cyclists and pedestrians, the scheme also provides a toucan crossing on Berry Church road and a footway a cycleway between the crossing and local primary school. This will greatly increase the connectivity within the area and enable sustainable modes of transport to be used by new residents and thus reduce the lights on the car. As well as this, two new bus stops will also be provided on Berry Church Hall Road. The committee report confirms that the Highway Authority are supportive of the scheme. The committee report also outlines the package of planning contributions that will be provided within the section 106, which has been drafted and which will be signed in due course. This will provide significant contributions towards healthcare, open space, education and community facilities. To conclude, our site is an allocated site in the plan which will contribute to the borough's housing supply. The committee report confirms that in the planning balance, the benefits convincingly outweighs any adverse impacts and we would endorse those comments. I trust you will agree with the case officer's recommendation and resolve to approve the application. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilshire. And now do we have um, Councillor Harris via Zoom, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you for allowing me to uh, to speak to the committee. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, the reason yes, we can. <laughs> okay, the reason um, of, of inviting myself asked to speak to you, Chair, was simply because I'm the county councillor, not the borough councillor for the area. Um, as county councillor, as you know, highways and road safety uh, become a feature. Uh, as Mrs. Stuttle quite eloquently pointed out, about the road safety and the hedgerow and the fact that it was a very rural, very rural area when I moved to Colchester. Hardly anybody went up and down that road. It was a, a place you drove to to get from A to B. Now it's become exceedingly busy. Um, and I, I support Mrs. Stuttle in her claim to have the, um, the access point reconsidered. I would very much like that as, as a, a good thing to happen. Um, I also want to spell out to your committee chair um, that I know you're the borough, uh, the borough councillor for Shrub Bend and you've got Lynn Bar Councillor Barton there as well. So I'm, I'm going to leave the planning matters for the borough to you too. Uh, but for me, um, as county councillor, uh, the number of people chair that have come to me to talk about difficulty crossing the road at that location with lack of footpath, lack of adequate footpath, the disabled people and the disabled care homes that live in that vicinity, I often, on the way back with some forwarders from home to Shrub End, have to slow down and allow, because I'm a caring sort of counsellor, as you guess, uh, a disabled person with their carer to step out into the road to cross because they're really having difficulty. So the toucan, 
or pedestrian crossing, as Mrs. Tuttle says, is absolutely essential there with a footpath. Um, now, I understand the toucan uh, is not noise. Uh, it's, it's no beeping, I don't believe, but perhaps the officer could explain that. Um, I thought a toucan was one where um, the lights show, but not necessarily the sounds. But that is essential, Chair. I think I can't emphasise enough about the fact that road safety here is an issue. And again, quoting Mr. Stuttle, uh, the people that do speed there, uh, you won't slow those down without some sort of infrastructure to do that. A crossing will do that, I'm sure. Um, the cycleway I'd support, and I understand, uh, committee, that it's in the local plan, so you're not going to throw it out, but what you can do is make it better for the residents that live there. You imagine, if you will, uh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, there was a child up and down there, a person backing into or out of their drive on Beer Church Hall Road would have no problem doing so. Now it's really, really difficult because of the level of traffic there um, and the growth. Um, you know, Chair, because uh, you're very, very switched on with the, with the, with the shrub end area, um, the building line never crossed over from the north side of Beer Church Hall Road to the west side or south side to where we're going now, except for a single row of houses. That has changed substantially in the last 20 years, and this is the latest in that. Um, so I'd appeal really to make sure that not a single key turns in a lock on a resident in the home in the new properties there until the infrastructure is there for road safety, highways improvement. Um, and really, I'd make that appeal to make sure that we do the best we can to ensure within the rules that you've got in your gift tonight to make sure the residents there and the prospective residents are done right by now and forever in the future. I hope that's okay and I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Councillor Harris. Well, you've heard um, very impassioned pleas. Um, I now throw it open to the committee. Um, would it, uh, Councillor Barton. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, 153 dwellings. I noticed the emphasis on the report at the beginning seems to be the 32 dwellings that we approved last year, which I actually voted against for the reasons that Councillor Harris said that the, the road improvements just weren't there. Um, but I feel it is used in the report as if it sets a precedent, and in my opinion it doesn't. We're talking 153 further homes here on that location, which I actually think is unsuitable. But looking at the improvements to highway, um, as mentioned, the two new bus stops, but as I said for the last application, will there be laybys? Because if not, the, the traffic will build up there really quickly and then it will impact on all the roads and people trying to come and go. So, so that won't be suitable, quite honestly. Toucan crossing, yes, that's a big tick. We did ask for that and that's, that's been included footway and the cycle way but um, regarding the cycle way as requested by the Colchester cycling campaign can the design be brought up to the standards that they quote in, in their responses please that would be useful um, looking at the top of Camulo Dunham and Beerchurch Hall Road as we know if you look at the reports that is an accident black spot and it's a nightmare and nothing that I can see addresses this issue and it will only get worse. And finally, exiting Maple Green Road is an ongoing nightmare, made worse by this development, I would have thought. Um, so can't a mini roundabout be placed at this junction, which has been requested by residents for years? So that would be helpful. And moving on, so they're all the highways issues that I've got. Um, going over now to, for the response from the Badger Group, um, it is sad to say that yet again, same applied with the Stanway applications, their habitat's being destroyed, which I've got a real thing about. And I'm totally against closing two active badger sets. So please, can we retain a wildlife corridor so that that doesn't actually happen? Doctor's surgeries have been mentioned. They've expressed concern. They're not happy. I know there's a big contribution, but that needs to be guaranteed. But they can't accommodate all these new residents, and I don't feel those... Um, areas have been addressed properly. Affordable houses are tip. Even the police have got concerns about certain aspects of the design with the security. So it's lots of people that have got lots of objections. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's all my points at the moment. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you very much, Councillor Barton. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Um, I sympathise with what Lynn's just said because um, this is 150 odd dwellings, 300 cars on site. We're meant to be going to sustainable transport, sustainable means of getting around the town, doing away with the cars. And I don't think we've done it good enough here. This is a rural, semi-rural location. Obviously, we're going into agricultural grounds, so it is a rural location. Um, as we've mentioned, doctors, that's another three or 400 people going to be using the doctor's surgery. None of the doctor's surgery in our area can, with, can actually sustain another um, amount of, um, I say customers, but you know, people or residents going to the surgery. We have no service now. It's in special needs in many areas. In Tollgate, we've just taken thousands of houses. There is absolutely no surgery to speak of. So we've got to be very careful when we're putting something like this in place. We give the best service to our residents that they're going to have a place where they can live, work and play and sustain it. We haven't heard back from the Anglia Water. We haven't heard back from the, um, the other authorities. Now we should hear back before this even comes to committee in my um, book. The Environment Agency, none received at the time of writing. No objection received from Anglia Water, an informative, an informative is recommended. What's the informative? You know, so I think really they should all be coming together. We should insist they actually reply to what we're asking so we can go out in confidence to say, yes, the development will be second to none and sustainable. Um, I don't know how we're going to make it sustainable for travel because obviously they are considerably um, further away from any facilities that we're offering. So they are going to be car reliant. We've got a bus service that will come into the area, but when that will come off, we don't know. You know, so I would like to actually see more set in stone what we can deliver instead of just being ifs and maybes, and we could just pass this and, it, and we may not get what we actually do want for the residents. And I think we owe it to the residents of this borough. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Councillor Lilly. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think that um, listening to the residents' concerns and the county councillor and the ward councillor, a lot of the issues around here are the highways issues. And once again, we, we don't appear to have a representative from Essex County Council Highways Department here tonight. We've said before in the past that they should attend so they could answer all these questions. It seems ridiculous that they that they want two uh, bus stops put in, but there's no infrastructure around that. Will they have shelters? Will there be laybys? All these questions could be answered, but they can only be answered by a highways expert, and they should be here tonight to ask those questions. How can we, none of us are experts, our planning officers are not highway experts. So on top of what Councillor McLean has said with her, with her uh, queries about the other items, it seems that highway should be here to answer the questions put forward by, by the public. And why aren't they here every time? Thank you, Councillor Lilly. We do ask, but uh, most often it's they haven't anybody available. Um, committee, any other comments at the moment? Councillor Hagen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. Again, I, I'm not going to go over the same points uh, that, that have been validly raised. It is about road safety, and actually I do agree with Councillor uh, Mike Lilly that there should be someone here from Highways to answer those questions. It seems to be an ongoing theme across this borough, um, and, and we do need some more detail um, and more thoughts. We often see in my own ward in Stanway where the issues that arise from estates, uh, developments that are built that they think, oh, we forgot to put the street signs in. Uh, and all of a sudden you get you know, complaints from residents never ending that you know, they can't get deliveries, they can't get emergency vehicles to their house. Um, I look at this development and I look at the pictures and I'm, I'm quite sad to see the, the beautiful countryside eroding from our borough. Every single week, we seem to have more and more houses going up. I get we need to build for, for our future, but it, it does strike a chord when you see that on, on the screen. Um, a couple of concerns I have about the design of the, of the development itself. Obviously, I don't know the area as well as maybe others in this room and, and online, and uh, I thank those for 
raising valid concerns about the, uh, the, the, the Beer Churchill Road and the access there. I will say that many years ago, I had a close family member who was nearly killed on that road at that junction just to the, to the right near that notorious triangle junction. Um, it does need serious consideration and thought as to actually the access over there on the left. It's going to be next, I'm looking at the map on here on the master detail, you can't see my screen, but um, it's all online. And it seems to be next door to another access point. So I don't quite know what's going on there. Um, there doesn't seem to be a, a, a complete master plan for the whole area. I'd like to see that and some joined up thinking, uh, especially for access for pedestrians. Um, I don't see that there's a pathway along Beer Churchill Road. Um, you know, we look at the issues that we had down Halstead Road when they were developing down on the, on, on the sidings down there. Um, they, they, they redid the, the, the footpath and it's actually a cycleway and it's connected and we've had bus cages put in. I would also say that a lot of the dwellings on the plan don't appear to have um, parking spaces. We're going to uh, come across the issue where perhaps um, people will be parking, uh, no option but to park their vehicles uh, in the road, on the path, blocking access to uh, those that need to use the pathway. Um, we shouldn't be parking on the pathway. There should be some sort of uh, space there available to do that. And, and, and one final point, um, I'm not going about the flooding because I don't know much about that, but I'm sure that there are experts that can uh, talk about the, the flooding aspects. I hope there's a fence going around that, that flooding area at the bottom there to protect anyone from potentially getting hurt. But why is the green area on this site hidden away in the corner? Where are the children going to play? Just a question on that. And uh, can we have some, uh, maybe some more green spaces in this plan, maybe on the corners? And just one other thing I just want to bring up, if, if it does get proposed, uh, for, if it does go through for approval, um, I'd like to see those street signs um, placed before any occupancy. And, and additionally, I would also like to see mature trees put on the street scene, uh, um, not these twigs that die off after a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hagen. Um, I, I have to agree basically with everything that's been said thus far. Um, Beer Church Hall Road is a road I know, as uh, most of us do, as an extremely busy street. Um, what I, I actually hate seeing arable land being used for building, but we are where we are. We have this application before us. What concerned me, I wonder how many flats are proposed? I was quite sh surprised to see flats on that ground. It doesn't look a very large piece of, of land to accommodate that number of houses. Um, so I would like um, confirmation of that, please. I fully agree with the lay-by for the bus stops. They are essential. Um, it will be pandemonium there without them. Um, the 46 new affordable homes are welcome, of course. The lack of the footpath, everything that has been said thus far is worrying. Uh, Mrs. Stuttle made um, very pertinent points on the access to the sites. Uh, and I wonder if the access area that's been proposed is in order to cram in more houses. I might be wrong on that, but I would like perhaps uh, um, Eleanor could comment on that. Um, in regard to the badger sets, it is pretty horrible to think that if it's a live badger set that's being destroyed, but as long as there's a wildlife corridor. I had badgers in my garden when I used to live in the country. We had a badger set there for many, many months, and the chap just often, le often left of his own accord. So badgers do move, but they do need a corridor in which to uh, go about their business, so to speak. Um, Eleanor, could, would you be kind enough? There's a lot of questions being asked. Are you able to make comments, please? Yes, certainly, Chair. So I'll do my best. There were quite a few there, and I'm trying to take notes as I've gone along. But if I miss any, please let me know. Or if Simon waves at me, I'll let you know. Um, so I'll share my screen again. If it will let me. I think we'll start on the access first of all. If I can get a laser pointer. Yes.
Yes, okay, great. So the laser pointer here, that is the priority junction. That is to serve this development plus the adjacent development here when it's fully constructed and the existing, sorry, it's not existing currently, but the proposed entrance for the adjacent site that's already got planning permission will be closed. And it's just the one access to serve both sites. The easterly temporary access, there were discussions with Essex County Council about whether this could be a second priority junction, but Essex County Council stated that most collisions happen at junctions and they were looking to try and reduce them and this site being of the scale it was didn't require a secondary access and therefore they accepted a temporary one for, con for the construction period but they would not support two here for safety reasons and the, the westerly access is the one that they are happy with. Um, in terms of the Toucan Crossing, the bus stops and the priority, sorry, the footpaths and cycle paths, that's all conditioned at condition 30. I might suggest that if there's anything that councillors wish to add, such as traffic calming measures, they might want to think about a suitable condition for that. Um, in terms of the badger set, they are protected species and there is one main set plus two subsidiary sets. The last time that they were inspected by an ecologist, they were active, but badgers are prolific set builders and therefore it's recommended as part of the mitigation for another badger survey to be undertaken three months before construction starts on this site. It will require a license from Natural England if they wish to shut the two subsidiary sets. The main set is not due to be shut, that's to be left alone essentially. And other mitigation packages are proposed within the ecology report. And these mitigation measures are considered to be suitable to overcome, overcome the impact upon the badgers. But as I said, there will be another ecology report submitted, uh, sorry, undertaken to make sure that all the badger activity on site is properly recorded. Um, in terms of comments by the police, um, they were addressed in the report at 8.2. Um, they did raise issues such as lighting, but um, the aspects that they raised have been sufficiently addressed. In terms of comments from consultees such as the Environment Agency, I'm afraid I can't confirm that we would get a response from them because it's out of our hands whether they do provide a comment or not. We can't um, ensure a false comment from them, unfortunately. Um, in terms of street signs, that's a condition so that before occupation, street signs are put in the site, so that's there in the recommended conditions. Um, car parking is provided, um, so it's provided in line with our car parking standards SPD along with cycle parking. Um, so the play location is here. And as, said, as I said before, it's located in this more century location so that there is more sort of coherence between the two sites so that the play area could potentially be used by both sites. So that's the reasoning there for the play area. And in terms of the unit mix, in terms of what's being provided, so there are 10 one-bedroom apartments, two bedroom apartments and two bedrooms over garages, flats over garages. Um, and most of these are the affordable housing units. Um, so I hope I've got most of it. I probably have missed some, so please let me know if there's anything else. Um, where will the affordable housing units be on the plan, please, Eleanor? Let me try and get up a plan, just bear with me.
Uh, so that's quite difficult to make out. It's a bit um, distant. Perhaps if I put my pointer right up. So the affordable housing units are here, centrally located in the plot, and then along here as well. So they're highlighted in red and green, if you can hopefully see those. And then the market houses are around the edges with uh, highlighted in blue. Thank you. Um, do we have any say on um, the Toucan crossing? Will that go in before the development? And also Councillor Barton's comments about a roundabout at uh, Morting Green Road. Um, so the crossing is proposed to go in before uh, occupiers enter the site and Sorry, please do remind me of the question in terms of the roundabout. Um, yeah, the junction of Maple Green Road and Beer Church Hall Road. It's really difficult for residents to access that. They've been complaining for years and we've tried on numerous occasions to get a mini roundabout there. Um, and that would slow down traffic, which is definitely needed on that road. I mean, whenever I deliver there, it's, it's absolutely dangerous to try and cross the road. So that would be another speed reduction thing in place and you didn't answer the question about the coastal cycling campaign they did ask if the design could be brought up to the standards that they quoted and i wondered if any discussions could be made had with them to just do that please yeah thank you for reminding me on those points and um, so the mini roundabout that's not been recommended by Essex County Council. Um, and I've had a meeting with the cycling campaign and put their concerns towards the highway authority because most of their improvements are on the highway uh, land. And unfortunately, Essex County Council found that they were not required for a development of this scale. Um, but those works, well, we did have the meeting to discuss it and there were improvements in terms of the comments from the Colchester cycling campaign, such as removing one of the access, one of the junctions uh, and having it down to one access point. Um, unfortunately, I can't comment much about the mini roundabout and whether that would be suitable from a highway authority perspective. I just know that it's not been part of their discussions or, or recommendations to this point. Thank you, Eleanor. Um, we used to have on Beer Church Hall Road, and I haven't noticed it lately, a flashing sign just around about Bounsted Road going, if you were travelling towards Layer Road, that would flash if you were speeding. Um, and that was a help. And so when you're talking about traffic uh, conditions, maybe we could stipulate that that is replaced if it isn't working, but also one coming from Layer Road going down, because it is absolutely uh, genuine that there is speeding down that road and a, a, a massive traffic flow all day long. Is that possible that we could condition um, those two traffic warnings? It certainly could be conditioned that traffic calming measures need to be provided to the local planning authority in writing prior to the development being occupied and those measures being retained. And the reason could be interest of ensuring that highway safety is considered thoroughly, for example. Thank you very much. Um, committee, are there any other comments on this? Uh, Councillor Hagen. Yeah, could you just confirm if there's going to be a pathway built along the front of the development and, and going west and east? Sorry, yes, I missed that one as well. Let me share a screen. I want to say pathway, a shared cycle pathway, thank you. Okay, so this drawing is a slightly zoomed out drawing of the proposed Toucan Crossing. So if I get my pointer going again. So the Toucan Crossing is proposed down here and the cycle and pedestrian pathway will be leading from round here up to St. Michael's Primary School. So that would be the location of the shared pedestrian and Foot, uh, sorry, shared pedestrian and cycleway footpath along here, making it much easier and safer for cyclists and residents to cross the road along here. 
Um, I know there were some comments about a zebra crossing, but the Toucan crossing is considered to be a superior uh, option here. And if the, if the button isn't pressed, then it does allow for free flowing traffic, which isn't necessarily always the case in terms of a zebra crossing. Um, so I hope that helps. Any further questions, just please let me know. Councillor Chillingworth. Thank you, Chairman. Some members of the committee know this area so much more better than I do. But it seems to me this uh, very busy road, it is a, a, um, a route round to the Mersey Road. And I, I know how much traffic that takes, particularly during, shall we say, commuter times. The amount of traffic which will come out of this estate, which will be both the one to the west as well as the one uh, going towards Mersey uh, will be considerable. And I can't imagine how this traffic from the new estates are going to get out onto that road at the busy times. Uh, I, I really find highways uh, uh, should have uh, looked at this in a lot more detail. I don't know if the other councillors are with me on this, but I, I, I'm inclined to ask for a deferment uh, so that highways can send somebody along for us to question. I don't know if others would agree with that. I, I certainly agree, I agree with that. Yes, I agree with that. Um, what concerns me looking at that last picture, as Councillor Hagen said, no, there's no footpath in front of that development. You pointed out the school um, on the corner of Camula Dunham. So all those children coming off that estate and going to that school will have to use the crossing. So they're coming out. I, it seems as though they're coming out, they're coming from a road onto a Toucan crossing. It, it's a bit messy, I think, um, particularly for a number of children who will be going to school from that estate um, quite early in the morning. Um, committee, I would be very happy to propose a deferment until we can get better answers from highways um, on, on the safety aspect of this development. Uh, if I propose it, do we have a seconder? Councillor Chillingworth or second. So, um, committee, are you ready to vote on that? Can I say something, please, Chair? Yes, um, Councillor Matthew. I would also like something back about the bus stop and the, um, you know, I don't think we've had enough information. So, um, they're saying, obviously, it is not considered the applicant can deliver item one within highway and or land under their control. I want more clarity on what they can deliver and not what they can't deliver. Well, that can be put to the highways um, representative if we can get him here. Um, uh, I think there are quite a lot of questions we need to ask. Um, committee, are you ready to vote on that proposal? All those in favour of a deferment until we get the highways member here? That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. So. Um, that uh, element will come back to us in due course. Thank you very much. Chair, can we just wait a minute while we Councillor Warren's back? Indeed. Where's the mask?
thank you very much, um, and uh, thank you for your patience, members of the public. Um, we now go to item 7.3, which is the former Lookers Renault Garage in Military Road. We have uh, presenting officer John Miles, please, if you would start us off. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. So I'll be speaking on item 7.3. The site address is 72 to 78 Military Road, Colchester. The application concerns the demolition of the existing car showroom buildings on the site and the construction of a sheltered housing facility and a residential apartment building, together with associated access, parking and landscaping. The application has been called in by Councillor Cope. So here we can see the site plan. It shows the existing buildings on site and the uh, slightly irregular plot shape. The site is located to the south southeast of Colchester Town Centre and the surrounding area is predominantly residential. A small section of the southern part of the site is also within the new town conservation area. So now moving on to some images of the site and the surroundings. This is a view towards the site from Military Road. You can uh, see here the main car showroom building visible uh, over to the left and the second building on site is just about visible in the distance on the right. This is a view looking north along Military Road from the site's edge and this is a view from a similar position but looking south. You can also see the, the bus stop there which is in close proximity to the site. This is a view from within the site, looking towards the properties which front onto Military Road. These um, are relatively recently um, constructed dwellings. This is a view from within the site itself. It shows another angle of the car showroom building visible, which is proposed to be demolished. In the distance, you can see um, several of the properties which are on um, Goody Close. A further view from within the site, this time looking towards the east. And you can see in the distance there, the rear of dwellings which front onto New Town Road. And an additional view of the site, this time looking towards the southwest. This is the second building on site, also proposed to be demolished. And here you can see some of the properties which front onto Military Road and are visible from within the site. It's just another view there onto Military Road and the existing properties fronting this section of the road. Now moving um, towards Goody Close, which is beyond the north of the Close. These images were taken at the start of the year. This is a view looking south from Goody Close towards the site. You can see the existing showroom here, image centre. Some further views here from um, Goody Road, again, Goody Close um, looking south. Again, you can see the relationship between the existing car showroom and the properties on Goody Close. You can see a section of the, the current building is, is quite hard up against that boundary. And this is just a slightly wider view, again, showing the relationship between the existing car showroom and neighboring properties, both on Goody Close and those fronting Military Road. Moving now onto the proposed site plan, you can see the sheltered accommodation facility here to the north of the site. The apartment building is located to the south of the site. You have overground parking for the apartments and a ramp leading to underground parking for the sheltered accommodation. You also have areas of um, communal amenity space for both the buildings. In indicative cycle parking is also shown. There's an ambulance bay as well to the, the, the front of the sheltered housing facility. Hopefully you can make out the, um, the, the hashed lines here, which um, denote the extent of the existing buildings on site which are proposed to be demolished. We have the existing showroom up here to the north and the second building down here to the south. 
This is a similar view, but this time showing the roof plan. You'll see that sections of the sheltered housing facility have a flat roof, but this will be screened um, from view by the pitched roof elements around the, the edge. Here are some elevations of the sheltered housing facility, the south elevation at the top and the west elevation down below. And this is the elevation that will um, front Military Road itself. And here are the uh, remainder of the elevations. We have the north elevation top, east elevation bottom. And here are the floor plans for the sheltered housing facility. You'll see that habitable accommodation is arranged over three floors with an additional basement level, which um, houses the proposed parking for the sheltered housing facility. Now looking at each of the floor plans in some more detail, this is the basement level car parking. The ramp access will be coming in to the right hand side. Here you have a total of 45 parking spaces, which includes four dedicated disabled bays, and these are um, positioned close to a lift, which serves all floors of the building. You also have stared access here. This is the um, ground floor plan, which includes um, a number of the units, a mixture of one and two bedroom. It also has a hairdressing treatment room, a uh, main reception, a staff office, a large buggy store, and a communal lounge for residents to use. And moving up here to the first floor, again, we have a range of, um, of different units of different sizes. We also have um, a specific wheelchair accessible unit on this floor, which is detailed to meet part M43 uh, building regulations. I'd just like to draw your attention to some windows here um, to, to the north, which are detailed to be obscure glazed. These um, can also be, it's recommended that these windows there, their obscure glazed nature is controlled by way of condition. There are also um, a form of aureole windows to some units, which you can see um, up here where my cursor is, and also these units here, which are designed to reduce any um, overlooking of the properties to the north, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit more detail later. And lastly, um, this is the, the, the second, second floor plan, again, a range of, um, of units and the inclusion again of a wheelchair accessible unit. And as mentioned, that the lift that serves all floors. Here are the proposed plans and elevations for the apartment building. So um, as you can see on the floor plan, it contains a mixture of one and two bedroom units. We have four two bedroom units and six one bedroom units. And this is an indicative CGI image of the, or an overview of the site. It shows the sheltered housing facility, which as I say is to the north, the apartments to the south. So this is to a degree indicative, um, details such as landscaping, um, the final details of those are recommended to be controlled by way of condition. But it does hopefully give an indication of how the elevant, uh, elevations will look and how the whole development um, comes together. This is a view from a different angle. You'll see the access ramp going down to the basement parking um, and the, the, the elevations of the sheltered housing and the, the apartments. And you can see here, um, hopefully, the, the Oriole windows, which were, were discussed earlier. So they are, they are solid on the northern sides to help reduce any overlooking of neighboring properties, amenity spaces, which are located here and here. And lastly, I'll just go through um, quickly some, some further CGI images. Um, this is the elevation fronting Military Road, some different angles of it. Moving into the site, the um, apartment building, a view looking back towards the, the sheltered housing facility and its main entrance. Further views from within the site, a view of a section of the um, communal garden to the sheltered housing facility. And I will just um, end the, the presentation here back on the site plan. And I'll also just provide a brief summary of um, the detailed consideration of material planning considerations that is outlined in the committee report. So it's considered that the scheme would bring a currently underutilized brownfield site in a prominent and highly accessible town centre location into an alternative sustainable use, which is considered to be for the betterment of the appearance of the site and for the character and appearance of the surrounding area. 
The proposal would also make a contribution to the council's housing stock through the delivery of the new homes proposed. A number of revisions to the design of the scheme have been secured over the application's determination with a view to address um, concerns initially raised by internal consultees. It's considered the proposal will, on balance, suitably preserve existing neighbouring amenity, makes adequate provisions for parking and the amenity of future occupiers. In addition to this, the scheme is held to meet the statutory tests for the preservation or enhancement of the conservation area and neighbouring listed buildings and their settings. It's considered matters concerning contaminated land, detailed landscaping, protection of existing trees, archaeological assets and sustainable urban drainage can all be suitably addressed by way of condition. Ultimately, the planning balance is considered to tip in favour of approval and this is officer's recommendation to committee subject to the completion of a section 106 agreement and the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you for listening. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, John. Um, Richard, would you be kind enough to read Catherine Spindler's um, statement for us, please? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, these are Catherine Spindler's uh, comments to the committee. Dear Chairman and Committee Members, while I fully support the much needed sheltered accommodation and low income housing, I cannot support what is presented in this application. Namely, there is woefully inadequate parking for the ordinary 10 one to two bedroom apartments, let alone the sheltered accommodation. There has been no allowance for visitors on either section of housing, no allowance for service vehicles, medical vehicles and carers. I am also concerned that placing accommodation with two bedrooms, which clearly will house children in an area with no green space, and next to sheltered accommodation housing vulnerable and unwell individuals is wholly inappropriate. There are also design issues, as this proposed development is out of keeping, which the Council's own urban officer has highlighted. There have recently been an excellent new development just further up from this, which is totally sympathetic to the nearby conservation area. This would not be in keeping with very minimal green space. I therefore request that this application be sent back by this committee for additional parking, more green space, a more sympathetic design to the area, and some form of vegetation stroke trees to separate the sheltered accommodation from the apartments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and now Councillor Cope by Zoom, please. Thank you, Chair. The reason why I called this in was really for the, because of the size of it. There are some objections which, which I wanted the, the committee to, to, to take, take, note, take notice of. It, look, it looked as if there were in, insufficient parking, but there's an underground car park and that's, that's, been, that's been dealt with. Limited schooling and medical facilities in, in the area, that, that's going to be a problem because of, the, because of the population increase. Reference to a co covenant relating to a proposed building on this land and there's concern over safety. The large number of documents include a landscape strategy, transport statement, habitat regulation assessment, and diagrams of various elevations and shadow assessments. I pay tribute to the, to the officer's presentation. He's, he's dealt with this, he dealt with many of the points very well. From Anglian Water, there's, there's a severe and, se and serious objection. Reading, reading what they said, this desktop analysis has just suggested that the proposed development will lead to an unacceptable risk of flooding downstream. We therefore highly recommend that you engage with Anglian Water at your earliest convenience to develop in consultation with us a feasible drainage strategy. If you've not done so already, we'll, we recommend that you submit a pre-planning inquiry with our pre-development team. This can be com completed. There are, there are mi minor issues. Apart from the parking, there's mobi mobility scooters. Residents are likely to use these, and I cannot see provision for storage of these vehicles. 14.2 ZCG reports that storage provision is as yet unresolved, or is, that, or is this a storage to be for, for, for refuse? It is unclear. Further residents, using further residents using scooters will need them to be parked near their own place of residence. I cannot see provision for that either. At present, it seems that a scooter left outside a residence will be a hazard to other residents and will not be secure in any event. Landscaping is still not determined and my concern is that it will be overlooked without a definite proposal, plan and committee by the development developers, paragraph 8.9 and 28. Such a plan should be submitted as a time, timely condition for this application. Paragraph 8.12 sets out the serious concerns of the urban design. 
simply because this proposed application is a useful and laudable use of a brownfield site, those comments should not, in my view, be disregarded in the haste to build this accommodation. There have been some last minute changes, for example, somewhere for an emergency vehicle to, 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 to park. That was going to be, that was one of our, our comments earlier, and that seems to have been dealt with. Secure cycle, if, if, if meant to, to use mobility scooters as well for, 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 from sheltered residents. All in all, there are some pluses and minuses, but I think the, 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 flood, the flooding one is a serious one. The military road area deserves to be enhanced. It has long languished as a deprived and cluttered area of, of, of Colchester. Thank you, Chair, for, 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 for letting me address the committee. Thank you, Councillor Cope. Um, would you um, like to comment so far on what uh, the two speakers have said before we go to the committee? Thank you, Chair. So I'll um, begin with um, the, the, the first matters raised. So as, as we said, um, parking was raised and um, yes, there's, 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 there's 45 spaces offered um, in the, the basement of the sheltered housing um, accommodation which is actually um, an, an over-provision against our adopted standards. So for a, um, a C2 use, parking is, is a maximum standard. So the 45 spaces we have there is actually technically an over-provision. However, for the reasons outlined in, um, in the report, the provisions um, made are, are considered acceptable despite being an over-provision. It's considered that the, um, the good accessibility to the bus links, the, uh, the opportunity to walk into town may mean that the um, sustainability credentials aren't going to be undermined by that over-provision of parking. With regards to the, 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 the C2 um, unit, yeah, there's, there's 10 spaces um, offered there, which, which aren't at this time um, allocated, so that'll be for a mixture of um, residents and um, visitors, it's anticipated. That is below, um, but below our, our standards, although policy DP9 does state that a lower standard of parking provisions may be acceptable where it can be demonstrated that there is a high level of access to services. And this is a, a location that's considered to be highly sustainable. As you saw in the pictures, there's a bus stop just across the road. It's also within good walking distance of the town centre and cycle parking provisions are also proposed to help mitigate um, car parking demand. In, um, I think the next, the next point raised was um, the, the, the potential impacts on um, the, the NHS and healthcare. So the, um, the, the NHS have, have been consulted and they've, they've requested a contribution of 23,000 um, to, to mitigate the impact of the proposed development. And that's been agreed in principle and um, that the legal agreement to secure those is, is, is currently in the process of being drafted and subject to the outcome of, um, of, of committee tonight. It, it, will, it will be completed before any decision is, um, is made. I think the potential um, was raised with regard to flood risk and some, some comments from, from Anglia Water. So Anglia Water um, confirmed that there's, there's adequate um, capacity for the, the, the wastewater flows um, anticipated. With regards to um, surface water um, disposal, um, they, they've also confirmed that the, um, the, the information submitted with the application is, is considered acceptable to them. They have re um, requested that an agreed strategy is reflected in the planning approval. We've also had consultation with um, Essex County Council as the lead um, local flood authority and they've recommended um, a number of conditions relating to sustainable, um, sustainable urban drainage systems and um, in the recommended conditions those conditions are there so that would require submission of details of the incorporation of, of such measures to prevent, um, to prevent any um, risk of surface water flooding. The site itself is in flood zone one where there's a low probability of flooding and it's, considerable, and it's considered suitable for all types of development from a flood risk um, perspective. I believe um, the, there was also a matter raised about um, scooter storage. Yep, yeah, there's a large um, buggy store within the, the facility itself. And in terms of cycle parking, um, cycle parking provisions are shown on the plans, but there are conditions covering the exact details um, to be agreed and um, then implemented to ensure that the cycle parking is um, is, 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 is secure and accessible and convenient for, for future occupiers. Um, lastly, I believe, was, was, was landscaping. So, yep, a landscaping strategy 
has been submitted, which we, which we are generally um, in agreement with. There were initially some concerns regarding the the, the boundary with military roads, and um, in in response to that, a, um, a, a brick, a low level brick wall has been introduced in, in keeping with the properties opposite to ensure that that that, that boundary is retained there. And there's also a condition covering the exact details of that wall to ensure that the wall is of acceptable quality and appearance, while um, final landscaping details are um, recommended to be controlled by way of condition and would be expected to be broadly in line with that landscape strategy. That's already been submitted, which includes a large number of proposed um, um, new native shrubs and also um, a, a number of trees within the site. I hope that covers everything, but yeah, I'm happy to come back on any of those points. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Miles. Um, committee, do we have um, any comments? Councillor Hagen. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just again, I, I like my trees. Uh, I'd like to see potentially, if this is uh, approved, um, some mature trees in there. The pictures look fabulous. Um, let's let's put mature trees in there, not twigs that are going to maybe not last through the winter. Um, I'd also question: um, Is there a covenant on the land as well? That was an objection that was raised. Uh, just wonder if you can answer that. Um, EV charging points. We want to make sure that we can power the vehicles of the future and we're not retrofitting in 15 years time especially with so many extra parking spaces which is uh, which is uh, quite good to hear um, I, I presume that the um, the flooding risks have been assessed for that if you're going underground and also any any sort of uh, Roman artifacts that may be found I guess that's all being dealt with um, the other thing I would ask is that perhaps a public accessible defibrillator is put on the outside and maintained by um, a relevant authority, maybe the ambulance service, and that will be a heated cabinet and accessible to all in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hagen. Councillor Chillingworth. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, this sort of facility is obviously badly needed, and uh, I, I'm pleased to see it coming forward for this site. Um, I'm a bit rusty when it comes to planning. I've been off it for some time. Uh, I'm, I, of course, I know that building regulations cover uh, aspects that I'm concerned about. Uh, of course, this building will be a, there a long time, and uh, we need to be carbon neutral as far as we can. But as far as planning is concerned, that's building regulations, I know. But what about um, solar panels? Uh, this is a substantial roof area. Uh, it would have been nice to see solar panels being incorporated in this. I, I, I don't know if we can put a condition on, uh, but um, if not, I'm at, it's a disappointment. I think these sorts of buildings should be designed at this stage of our, um, our march towards carbon neutrality, shall we say. Uh, and in Colchester, I think we should be ahead of the game, if possible. So I just asked that point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chillingworth. Councillor Lilly. Uh, yes, I think that I agree with uh, Councillor Chillingworth about the uh, solar panels. It should actually be standard on uh, most houses that are built from now on so that the households could remain uh, self-sustainable from the electricity that they come in instead of uh, paying the, the exorbitant uh, costs to uh, the French National Power Company that we have. Um, well, on the other subject, there's another one was um, um, sprinklers. There don't appear to be a sprinkler system in there. And like solar panels, sprinkler systems should be standard as well, especially in the, in the uh, sheltered accommodation area. Um, and it's disappointing that we don't insist on sprinkler systems to be put in everywhere. It will save lives, we all know that. Uh, but um, is there any way that we could put it in afterwards as a condition, or can we not? Thank you, Councillor Lilly. Councillor Warns. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I would support um, sprinklers, although I think I'm not sure whether that's um, a legal requirement. Um, I would support solar panels alongside EV charging points as well. Um, also, 
Um, it's been mentioned about Roman archaeology that it must be remembered that under the Hyderabad and Mini barracks, the line of the old beer church died, which is an Iron Age um, structure, was also found. So I would ask that as greater care as an oversight as possible to to uncover and understand what uh, what archaeology might be available on that site is indeed found. Um, wanting a bit of housekeeping here, and on paragraph 17.11 and 17.12 on page 112, um, it talks uh, about revised drawings to, uh, to address issues expected. And, and, it, and um, it says, subject to the above identified matters, which talked about messing and scale and character, um, subject to those matters being resolved so my question to the planning officer is in items in paragraph 17.11 17.12 have they been addressed and also um in 17.15 um it talks about the apartment block being comparable in footprint but will be significantly different in scale and messing and will be taller than the existing garage building which if i understood the slides correctly is either a one or two story structure and am i correct in thinking that the apartment block is in fact three stories so would it be possible for the planning officer to be able to roughly demonstrate using the photo showing the view from goody close what the visual impact will be and quantify um, whether there are any overlooking implications through through what appears to be a significant height difference um, for uh, for residents living in goody close thank you thank you very much councillor warns um mr miles you've got quite a lot of questions there to answer thank you Thank you. I'll try and address um, all the matters in the in the order that they were raised. So, firstly, um, looking at trees. Yes, as you say, that the, the trees are included at this stage. We don't have details of the exact um, necessarily the species or the maturity of them. We can certainly look to include an, an informative specifying that we we would look for, for the trees to be um, of, a, of a reasonable level of, of maturity. And the the standard landscaping condition, which is recommended, also includes um, a clause which um, covers five years. So, if the trees were to die, fail to establish, fail to thrive in that five year period, they would be required by that condition to, to replant to our satisfaction. So that would ensure that the trees do establish and, and ultimately then um, form an important part of the street scene as, as you can see in those indicative um, CGI images. In terms of um, a covenant on the land, that, that would um, I don't have a great deal of detail on that, but that, that would likely be um, a civil matter. Um, EV charging, yes, we, we, we've also got a condition which covers EV charging, so it looks for one EV charging point per 10 um, unallocated spaces or a, a one to one ratio where the spaces are allocated and that's a condition that's been agreed, um, so, so it's, it's expected that those EV charging points will be, um, will be provided. In terms of um, archaeology, yes, um, the, the council's archaeological advisor has been consulted, and they've um, they've they've said there's no grounds to, to recommend refusal in terms of potential damage to archaeological assets. But a condition has been recommended, which will cover um, um, investig investigation works and also monitoring throughout construction to ensure that um, if there are any archaeological assets present, that they're, they're suitably um, removed or preserved in, in situ, depending on what's appropriate. So that protection is in there for any archaeological um, assets. In, in, in terms of access to a, to a defibrillator, um, yep, again, that, that, that's something which we could definitely look to include as an informative, and um, we, we could specify that we, we, we look for that to be in a publicly accessible location, and then hopefully um, ad, ad, adopted by, um, by, by a suitable body who would, um, who would deal with that. Um, again, yeah, but I think I've touched on, on the EV, EV charging and, and to do with that. In terms of carbon um, neutrality, um, insulation and, and matters such as that, that's more a building control matter. But yeah, the, the, there may be opportunity to include solar panels. So that's something that we could um, also look to put an, an informative on that we'd hope to see solar panels included as, as, as part of, of, of the development and utilising any opportunities that may, may exist um, there. With, with sprinklers, um, 
Yeah, and, and, and issues of fire safety. That's um, not necessarily something that, that we look to be um, addressed in detail at this stage. That is, again, more, more building regs. But we have had a consultation response from um, the um, Essex Fire Service, and there is an, a specific informative covering sprinklers, and it provides some helpful guidance that um, um, Essex um, Fire and Rescue have, have provided, and that, that's on there as informative and um, effectively um, in, in, in saying that we, we would welcome the inclusion of, of sprinklers in, in the development. So yeah, we've, we've covered um, archaeology. I think the, the next point was um, the, the revisions to the drawing. So yes, um, since, since the time of writing the committee report, we have had some revisions received, and those are included on the amendment sheet with um, new drawing numbers. So the revisions are, are all the images that you, you've seen in the presentation this evening. They're the most recent um, most recent um, version of the plans. And um, yeah, the, the, the council's urban designer has been consulted on those revisions and has provided a, um, a supplementary consultation response, which is also on the, the, the amendment sheet. But um, I, I can read an, an extract of that, 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 that may be helpful. So the urban design officer comments that the consistent application, apologies, I'll start. So yep, the, the, the changes include um, changes to the variety and application of materials, the introduction of modest elements of detailing, and altered fenestration. The consistent application of these features enhances the appearance of the building and makes positive contribution to the adopted design aesthetic, resulting in a greater degree of synergy with the site's surroundings and reinforcing the rhythm established by the building's form. So those are the comments direct from the council's urban design officer, um, specifically in relation to the changes to the military road frontage, and that, that those are the plans that, that, that you've seen this evening. I will um, now look to share my screen to go over some of the points regarding um, potential for overlooking and then the visual impact of, of the, um, the, new, the new built form. So if I start with, um, with a view of the um, existing structures on site. So I'll start just inside the site itself. So you can see here to the north of the site, there's, um, there's the, the, the main showroom building, which is, um, sections of it are single storey, however it has quite a, a high roof for a single storey building given the, the nature of the use and that um, high levels of headroom were required. There is also a two storey element which you can see over to the left which I believe um, housed a first floor office and this is um, the, the, the section that is proposed to be um, up to three storeys, the sheltered accommodation and the, the, the second building here which is single storey but again with quite a high um, ridge line that's, um, it's, it's in this general um, location that the, the apartment building is going to go, which is going to be two storey. So effectively it's an increase in, in, in around one storey here and around um, two storey in relation to this building. So we've got some views on, on Goody Close, just to again have a look at the, the relationship there. You can see that the existing building, um, the, the ground steps up slightly, it's, it's not hugely um, significant in an in officer's opinion, however um, you're left with that, that quite stark wall on the side and you can, you can see the height of it in relation to the, um, the existing three-storey flats there and then you can see the height in relation to, to the two-storey dwelling. So it's quite hard up on the boundary in, in, in this position and you have the sections of the, the, the two-storey element. So it's, yeah, as it says in the report, it's recognised that the, that the replacement building is, is going to be um, higher in this location, so it's going to be three storeys. If I go on to the um, site plan though, you'll see that it's, it, it's stepped in into the site here. Um, by, by comparison, the dotted line which you can see the existing building is hard up against the boundary. So while the height is being increased, it's being stepped further into the site. And it's considered that as a result of that, any um, overshadowing or, or overbearing effects, um, it, it's, it's, it's not considered that, that there'll be um, a material difference between them. Looking at um, overlooking more, more specifically, um, again, looking at the floor plans, 
So the, the, the ground floor, there's no concerns with regards to overlooking to the north and Goody Close. If we're looking here at the, um, the, the first floor, these windows um, to, to the northern end, up at the top left here, are going to be conditioned to be obscure glazed, non-opening below 1.7 metres. And as I mentioned, the use of these um, oriel windows here, which effectively direct any angles of, um, of overlooking away from the properties to the north. So, um, the, so in the locations where there's the potential for, for, for materially um, harmful overlooking, these, um, this specific form of windows has been introduced to help mitigate against that. And again, if I show some of the um, 3D images, um, you should be able to see here that the form of the oriel windows, and the, you can sort of get a bit of an idea about the amenity space, um, which is sort of located um, to the south. And you have these oriel windows here with um, the, the, the solid sides in, in the locations that would offer the most um, harmful angles of overlooking. And it's considered that um, in the form proposed, um, any mutual overlooking that's observed won't be materially harmful in, in the context. I hope that, um, that, that covered everything. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mars. Are you happy with that, Councillor Warns? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, are there any further questions? Councillor McLean. No further questions, but I would like to propose that we accept it with all the recommendations and all the changes and, you know, with the added solar panels and everything. I think it's a very nice development. It's going to be super. I'm happy to second that with, as you said, the conditions, the informatives um, going forward. Um, so all in favour, committee? That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very um, much. That has Chair, been passed. On a point of order, can I ask the councillors to speak directly into the mic as I'm struggling to understand everything that some are saying? Thank you very much, Councillor Warren. Um, I'm sure we will all do that. Thank you. Uh, members of the public and uh, members here, we would normally have a break at eight o'clock, but I'm proposing that we break now for 10 minutes and then we can stretch our legs and um, have a comfort break if we need it and then we will come back fresher to um, negotiate um, the, the next application. So I thank you for your patience, um, but we are very nearly there. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are now ready to begin 7.4, uh, the application for the de demolition of the brick boundary wall to Lexton Manor, etc. It is recommended for approval, but we have Officer Chris Harden who will present the case to us. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, this application is uh, for the construction of three four-bedroomed houses at Marlow Way in, uh, to the rear of Lexton Manor. I'll just take you through the drawings now. Um, this shows the site. Um, the site is hatched in the middle there. Um, you can see the surroundings and also the, you'll see the green areas um, are areas of open space in the vicinity. And this shows the location of the site a, a bit uh, closer. So the red line is the application site. Uh, to the uh, rear is Lexton Manor and its Kirklage. And then there are dwellings next to it and to the rear along here. And then the application site to the right shows um, a larger context it's within uh, an area of sort of 60s and 70s housing, um, a rather a pleasant environment overall. Uh, I'll just show you this photograph first and then I'll take you to the drawings and then show you some more photos. So this was uh, a drone photo submitted to us. Um, You'll see the building to the rear is Lexton Manor. The site is located in front of it, the two TPO trees at the front, and this wall located here. Uh, you'll note that from the pictures later on that a part of the wall has been punched through already. That shows the existing site, really it's not very clear, but essentially it just shows an open site here with the trees at the front here and the road fronting here with the junction. And this is the development proposed. Three dwellings. Um, you'll note the TPO trees are retained. The driveways have been positioned to avoid the tree. Uh, there's another driveway through here which avoids a, uh, a post. And then gardens to the rear here, Lexton Manor garaging and then space for parking in front. And this is a drawing showing the form of the dwellings. Essentially it's a two and a half storey in the main centre and uh, the two storey attached to it. So that's the typical form of the dwellings. Quite a narrow gable and then the garaging located in this area here. And we've got a street scene view of it. Hopefully that's clear enough for you. And we've got the three dwellings positioned here. Then we've got the uh, neighboring property here. You'll note that the overall uh, height of the highest point of the dwelling is about 1.8 meters higher than the neighboring dwellings. And then the dwelling steps down here to, I think it's only about 0.3 higher. So there are varying roof heights and the same applies uh, to the relationship to the dwelling this side. Uh, these are two street scene drawings. Uh, hopefully you can glean something from them. They're a little bit light, I must say, but um, you've got the row looking one way here and then the row looking one way here with the neighbouring dwelling uh, next to it here. And this is a photograph of a similar scheme that's been erected at Braiswick. Um, this is a very similar sort of um, development um, showing an idea of what the dwellings could look like. The materials are obviously flexible, including on the front element here. I think that gives quite a good example. 
Um, this is the floor plans of it if you need to look at those at uh, a later date, uh, four bedroomed dwelling. And I'll take you through some more photographs now, another aerial view of the site. Site frontage here. Note the manor here and the construction of a, a replacement wall in the middle of the site and the, the front wall will be removed to facilitate the development. It's another view looking towards the front of the site. So it's showing the junction opposite trees to be retained and the dwellings on the opposite side of the road. And then another view looking back towards the left. And then another view looking the other way across the site. <coughs> Uh, I'll take you through the street scene photographs now. So this is looking towards the front of the site, the manor to the rear. Uh, you'll see the hole punched through the wall here, the area of green space in front, and the two TPO trees also at the front. Uh, note the proximity of neighbouring dwellings and their form and design. Uh, looking straight into the site, you'll see the, the area that's been punched through the manor to the rear, which is a quite a pleasant looking building, but it's not listed or locally listed. A view looking the other way. And then back with a wider street, you'll see there's, uh, you can just see the, at the end of the road there, areas of current open space. And further down that road, there is a barrow with uh, more open space and large trees. And this is the open space directly opposite the site. And then looking into the site and also showing the design detailing of the neighbouring dwellings. And then uh, looking back, showing dwellings on the opposite side of the road. And then the view of the open space opposite the site, uh, it's quite a pleasant open space. Uh, it gives a sense of uh, spaciousness and greenness in the vicinity. And uh, looking further down the road, back towards the site, site located here. And this is further down the road that uh, where the barrow is, as I explained earlier. So you'd go around this road, carry on down, and the site's on the left. So you go down here, and then on the left. So I'll just take you back to the layout as I go through the planning considerations. First of all, I've got a couple of extra points to uh, report. Firstly, in terms of the unilateral undertaking, whilst the monitoring fee has been made, the actual unilateral undertaking has not been finalised as yet, so that will need to be finalised before any decision is issued. If the application is refused, then that would need to be added into the refusal reason because it's not been finalised as yet. I think the applicant is waiting for the decision. If it's approved, it would finalise it. Um, so that is still outstanding. So that's a slight amendment to the report. Uh, we've received some extra comments since the report was done. Firstly, we've got a comment from the MP, Will Quince, and essentially his uh, letter says that we need to have very careful consideration to all of the objections raised by the residents during the meeting tonight. So he reiterate, reiterates the issues are with regard to the structure and appearance of the properties, the fact that the properties are three storeys, um, the fact that concern has been raised over design, and also over parking issues, and the fact that residents are concerned that the garages could be converted to uh, rooms rather than garaging in future. And he's also made the point that a lot of residents have commented about the wall being partly removed already without any permission being granted. I would have just to add to that 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 wall would not require planning permission to be demolished. So um, please bear that in mind. Um, 
The MP also refers to the fact that residents have made a, a lot of concerns about impact upon trees and also that um, the wall should be replaced now rather than being left open as it has been uh, partly removed. And we've also received eight further letters of objection since the report was written. Uh, essentially, these are reiterating the concerns raised previously um, and also adding the concerns about the wall being partly removed. And they're reiterating the concerns about overlooking and that uh, the design is not sympathetic to the character of the area, the parking concerns and impact upon trees. And uh, they're also raising the point of wondering what the walls would be like that divide the three new properties. So I'll now turn to the planning considerations of the proposal. I think overall this is considered to be a very finely balanced scheme. Uh, there have obviously been a lot of objections to this proposal and the existing area is a very nice environment. It's a mixture of spaces and um, nicely laid out properties and we're fully aware of the, rate, the key objections in that respect. So I was actually brought up on a and a state of similar characteristics where there are elements of open spaces. So um, these spaces do add a lot to the character of the area. So that needs to be very carefully considered. Um, in terms of the principle, it is within the settlement limits and the national planning policy framework does give a presumption in favor of sustainable development. So the NPPF does support the principle of such development and therefore the proposal should be judged on its planning merits. So with regard to the, the loss of uh, an area of open space, um, you'll note that the actual development is of a similar density to the surroundings, but there will be a loss of some of the open area to the front of the site because you will be punching through with three driveways. Uh, nevertheless, you will be retaining uh, quite a significant area of open space and grass area and the trees and there would be scope for some extra planting and there would also be a condition applied to ensure that you don't have any enclosures on the frontage so whilst there will be some loss of open space it's not considered that uh, that would be so significant to warrant a refusal on the grounds of loss of open space in this location Turning now to the actual setting of Lexton Manor, the building is a pleasant building, although as I've said it's not listed or locally listed, so that does reduce the level of protection afforded to it. You will lose some views of the manor. Um, some views will be potentially opened up because you're removing the wall, but uh, nevertheless you'll, you'll lose some views because there will be three dwellings in front of it there will be gaps that you can view the manor behind. So overall on balance, because of the fact that it's not a listed building, it's not locally listed, and uh, there will be gaps between the development and Lexton Manor, including back-to-back -back distances, it's not considered that the, the loss of the view of Lexton Manor and its setting is so significant that we could justify a refusal on those grounds, as indicated in the committee report. We'll now turn to the design scale and form of the development. It's clearly the development is uh, a different design to its surroundings. Um, I think it's fair to say that the, surroundings, uh, the surrounding dwellings have not got a particular architectural merit, but nevertheless, the context is a pleasant one. Um, it's a 60s and uh, 70s, early 80s sort of layout, which has got merits in itself. Uh, nevertheless, it's considered that this development uh, represents good design in terms of a sharp contemporary scheme um, with the use of high quality materials and could actually fit in satisfactory to the character of the area. Um, it's probably best not to replicate the designs of the neighbouring properties uh, because obviously this is a new scheme and, and we're in a different sort of era where designs have altered in that respect. The designs uh, show a relatively traditional gable width with then a more modern feature on the front. Uh, we've got vertical emphasis uh, glazing fenestration arrangements 
and with the use of high quality materials with probably a variation in the middle dwelling including the roof material it's considered that, that could uh, relate satisfactorily to its surroundings and as outlined in the report it's therefore not considered um, that the proposals should be refused on the grounds of the design scale and form. The narrow element of the dwellings is taller than the surrounding dwellings but the lower element is only just marginally taller and the way the spacing of the dwellings is shown in the street scene it's not considered that that would overscale and overpower the dwellings on the either side of the site. So turning now to the layout and garden areas, you'll note from the report that garden spaces do exceed the standards required um, for dwellings of this nature and scale. The standards indicate that four bedroom uh, dwellings require 100 meter squared garden spaces. That, that's private amenity space to the rear, but the garden spaces proposed are uh, varying from 140 to 153 square meters, so they do exceed the standards. Uh, so in that respect, um, it's difficult to argue it's an overdevelopment of the site. <coughs> in terms of neighboring residential amenity impact, the dwellings are considered far enough away from neighboring properties to avoid an overbearing impact or loss of light. Um, obviously, the rear of the dwelling looks towards the rear of Lexton Manor, which is why the rear fenestration detail has been amended to avoid overlooking and then also be obscure glazing conditions to ensure that uh, windows can't be looked out of over neighbouring private amenity spaces to the rear and to the rear right. So there will be a stringent condition in the list of conditions there. <clears throat> So we now turn to highways issues. It's considered there are adequate parking spaces on the site. You've got spaces for two parking, two cars to park at the front, and also the garage would be a space within the site. Um, a condition could be added to ensure that that is retained as garaging if members would like that added in. <clears throat> So I'll take you to the recommendation. Overall, I think this is a very finely balanced case. There are uh, elements that um, you would say you're losing some open space and you're losing some view of the manor. Um, so there are pros and cons for it. But on the other hand, it's a sustainable development. The designs are considered acceptable and would uh, relate satisfactorily to the character of the area. Highways issues are satisfactorily resolved and the trees will be retained and there will still be some openness on the site. So the recommendation is therefore authority to approve subject to the finalisation of the unilateral undertaking. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr Harden. Um, may we have um, Simon Sorrell to come to the committee, please, to address us? Thank you, Mr. Sorrell. You have three minutes and a bell will go after two minutes. Thank you. Microphone. Your microphone. Sorry. Uh, good evening, committee. Uh, my family and I moved to Marlowe Way 30 years ago. It's been a wonderful place to live with its own particular character, no through traffic, houses of similar design and uniform height on low density plots, mature trees and unfenced front gardens giving a relatively open streetscape. Equally important are small areas of publicly accessible green open space. These are vital to the street's visual attraction and overall amenity of residents and wildlife. The application site is one of these spaces. Marlow Way's open space and hence distinct ambience is now threatened by developers. We urge you to refuse planning permission because of the valuable contribution this area of open ground makes to the character of the road. A marker should also be put down to protect other amenity spaces in Marlow Way. Recent years have seen several proposals to develop Lexton Manor, each attempting to achieve maximum profit through overly dense development. 
Residents' concerns have been limited to development behind the manor's boundary walls, but this proposal will literally knock down the wall and directly affect the whole of Marlow Way. The characterful wall at the back of the amenity space contributed to the streetscape, but remarkably, the developer commenced demolition without permission, a flagrant breach of planning control and lack of subsequent enforcement. Regarding the proposal, we expected robust consideration of the objections that cite material planning considerations, so are dismayed at the officer's recommendation and reports comments. It almost seems to be cheerleading for the developer. Paragraph 16.4 states this is a finely balanced case, but then continues to entirely support the proposal. Where is the balance? 16.5 states open spaces of no significance to the streetscape or character. 62 objectors disagree. It is the most prominent of all the accessible spaces in Marlow Way, being the first such visible space uh, after passing the giant redwood trees. Officers, officers are totally wrong on this point, as the pro proposal can fix directly with policies DP1 and 15. The, proposal, the proposed house design has additional third story and higher than all others in the road. Policy DP1 requires designs that respect the character of the immediate area. The, 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 uh, the report states that the houses are of no particular archi architectural merit, the existing houses, as well as being mild, mildly dis insulting, this is an excuse, not justification. I'm not generally anti-development, however, Marlow Way enjoys a particular character which deserves to be recognized. I therefore ask you to recognize the concerns of so many, acknowledge the very real and detrimental impact this will have on Marlow Way and refuse planning consent. And thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. You, you, you will have heard the um, planning officer's comments that um, there were permitted development rights that allowed the breaching of the wall. So the um, developer was not in any breach in doing that, as unfortunate as it may be for those of you who live around it. But um, he didn't need planning permission to do it. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think it, it was our assumption that it did because that was stated in the request. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Paul, please come and address the committee. Um, you, know, you know the procedure, Mr. Pomery, three minutes and a bell after two. Thank you. Good evening. National planning policy and your own local plan seeks to make the best use of land in settlements and in locations that are accessible to schools, shops, buses and other services. The use of such sites reduces the need for housing growth on greenfield land in the countryside. The site is what your planning policy team would call a windfall site, an urban site that emerges during the course of a local plan period. Windfall sites make an important contribution to the council's housing supply, so it is important that they continue to come forward and be developed. This particular site has emerged to some extent through chance. The sale of Lexton Manor to the applicants coincided with the Marlow Way frontage land being put up for sale around the same time. This meant that an opportunity arose to combine the two sites and that led to the application before you. The applicants understand um, but for those who live around the site, this possibility may never have been imagined and it would not have come forward if it weren't for this coincidental timing. However, it has and the application proposals are before you to be determined having regard to the local plan policies. First and foremost, the land does not benefit from any special policy protections or other designations other than the protection of the two trees which are secured. The land is not public open space. This then leaves the applicants with a challenge of producing a scheme that is capable of meeting your policies for development. The application has been through seven months of discussions with officers. This has led to some amendments to the scheme and has reached the point where officers are able to recommend approval. That recommendation is based upon the fact that the scheme is policy compliant in every respect. The large level of objections to the lo from local residents was anticipated. The applicants fully understand the concerns that have been raised. 
This is an area where the new housings are rarely built as opportunities are very limited. However, the site has emerged and the onus has been to get the development right and to ensure it complies in every respect with planning policy and safeguarding amenity. Some objections have described the proposal as three-storey. Respectfully, that's incorrect. They're predominantly two-storey with accommodation within the roof space. This is evident from a review of the street scene and Chris has pointed that out in his presentation. Parking and garden areas all meet policy standards and as I've said, the proposal is policy compliant. The scheme also includes solar panels, EV charging points to each property and ground source heat pumps. The applicant appreciates the local concerns and objections and sought to resolve any issues that might lead to any acknowledged harm. No such harm has been demonstrated in the objections and your officers, having considered all the issues, are content that there, there are no aspects of the proposal that would sustain or support refusal of planning permission. But thank Cons you, Mr. Pomer. Sorry, you've reached your time. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Buston is first on the list, but would you prefer Councillor Lissimore? To... <laughs> Councillor Lissimore, please, will you address the committee? Thank you. Tonight, I shall be Councillor Buston. Good evening, Planning Committee, and uh, thank you for hearing this application. I called this application in way back in the spring of this year, and I believe from the period of time that it has taken to bring it to committee, we can see that this is not a straightforward application. I know this area well and agree with the objectors that the design is out of character. Rather than our planning officers saying approve or refuse, I do wish we could perhaps have a scale of acceptance because in the report, the officer is quoted as saying in paragraph 16.4 that the application is finely balanced. It is therefore not a certain that this should be approved. And again, the period of time that this application has taken to come to committee highlights that. There are 62 letters of objection for this application and it is a very contentious area. The land behind this development is part of Lexton Manor, which is accessed through Colvin Close and Lexton Grove. There have been many planning applications on that land to utilise the space around the house, but this is the first using access from Marlow Way. I will concentrate on design, as I believe this is where the development fails against our own planning policies and documents. Remembering that the planning officer has stated in the report that the development is finely balanced, I believe that this development with three storeys is out of character with the area and is not a good design. Now one can argue about whether it is two storeys or three storeys, but whichever way you look at it, it is one storey more than every single property in the surrounding area. If the committee look at the street scene drawing, we can see from the bottom picture the height of the houses in conjunction with the road. However, this is not a true representation of what surrounds the development. As one looks at the plot, to the left are a number of properties that are all chalet houses. They are two storeys, but none of them are full height two storeys. To the right of the plot, there are two houses before the road junction, and they are again chalet type properties that are both not full two storey height. On the opposite side of the road, there are properties that have very low roof heights. The road opposite, the mount, has again two-storey chalet-style houses with restricted height roofs, and opposite the plot is a, a two-storey chalet-style house with restricted height roofs, and opposite the plot is a house again built in a Swiss chalet style, with its upper floor having restricted headroom due to the height of the roof. There are then two further houses which have very low roof lines, similar to other houses in the area. Therefore, the houses that surround this plot are all of restricted roof height. This development, as quoted in the report, accepts that the application has roof heights that are at least 1.8 metres higher than any neighbouring properties. That's three properties, 1.8 metres higher than all the surrounding properties, and three houses 1.8 metres taller than all the houses in the estate and 1.8 metre taller than the estate that you have to drive through to get through to Marlow Way. Paragraph 16.7 states, it is clear the dwellings differ significantly in terms of their design compared to neighbours' properties. 
And this is where I do not understand why this application has been put forward for approval. If the application is significantly different to its neighbouring properties and the estate that you have to drive through to get to Marlow Way, and in fact the whole of Marlow Way estate itself, plus Lexton Grove and Colvin close behind the development, why is it up for approval? Local councillors and residents believe that this application is against Culture to Borough Council's own design policies, policies that we have spent hours working on and approving through different committees and full council. Why then say, well, yes, this differs significantly from the surrounding area for three houses and 1.8 metres taller than any property in the whole estate, but that's okay? I believe this development breaks MPPF section 12 of well designed places, DP1 design and amenity in our development policy, DP12 and DP14 in that it does not enhance the site or the surroundings. Paragraph 16.6 .6 states design scale and form need particular care as they differ from surrounding properties. If it differs and clashes from the surrounding properties to such an extent as stated in the report, then it must be against our own planning design policies. I therefore ask the committee to consider this finely balanced application and refuse the application on the grounds of design using MPPF section 12, well-designed places, UR2 course strategy, DP1 design and amenity in the development policy, and DP12 and DP14, as it does not enhance the site or its surroundings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ms. Moore. Councillor Buston. Before I start, could I possibly ask um, if the officers would be kind enough uh, to put up on the screen uh, the photograph of the street scene, the scene from the street, uh, towards the property, um, including what might indeed be Mr. Harden's car, because I think that is quite um, uh, important to the committee's understanding of the nature of the site. Are you able to do that, Count, uh, Mr. Harden? Uh, or is it not in keeping? Yes, Chairman, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. You're very kind, thank you. Uh, That'll do. Uh, do you want that one uh, or? Uh, that'll do, yes, that'll do. This one? The, the one back. Then we can go on to the next one. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. I, I'm much obliged to you. <coughs> Madam Chairman, Committee, good evening. Thank you for hearing my submission. Um, I wish to demonstrate to the Committee that notwithstanding the officer's report, there are sufficient material planning considerations, including deviations from this Council's policies to justify refusal and further such MPC sufficient to be able to withstand any appeal. The unique and essential character and ambience of this area is characterised and established <clears throat> of low-rise, mostly chalet bungalow, single storey with accommodation in the roof style, relatively spacious properties built in the 1970s presenting a uniformity of fundamental open plan aspect and unchanged design set back from the road reflecting that era and primarily characterised by green open space and spaces open to the public. There are 58 properties in Marlow Way and three in the Mount. There are 62 and now it would appear 70 objections. Design the size, bulk, density and design of the three closely cited application properties which will eliminate one of the Marlow Way green open spaces that are open to public access is completely at odds with the unique character of the whole area. The design including the layout neither respects nor reflects either the character of the site, its context nor indeed its surroundings, a reality that is disingenuously dismissed I suggest in paragraph 16.9. Amenity green spaces. The CBC planners of 1970 had the foresight to require the inclusion of a small number of publicly accessible green open spaces within the development. It is one of the largest of those publicly accessible green open spaces that is now under threat of speculative development for pecuniary gain, rather than any enhancement of the area or the amenity of its residents that you now have before you. 
Indeed, there is another one immediately opposite the site at the Mount, recently acquired by another speculative developer who will no doubt be watching tonight's proceedings closely. Both green open space areas have indeed been extensively and continuously used by the public for walking their dogs, etc., etc., for over 50 years. The report suggests, paragraph 2.3, does not consider that the loss of this currently open area can justify a refusal. Residents find this a bizarre pill to be required to swallow, as on page 9 of this very agenda under paragraph 854 in another matter. However, it was noted that the application would cause a loss to the local green space, judged by the officer to be the determined to the detriment of the area's character and going against the priority of maintaining green, local green space and protecting the character of the street scene, etc., etc., etc. The NPPF presumption was in favour of sustainable development. And whilst this development was deemed to be sustainable, this did not override the harm which would be caused to the character of the local area. The local area there, and again I know it very well, Highfield Drive is in Lexton, in a spacious wooded area with only six houses in the road. Six houses in that road, not the 61 there are in this. Yet in that instance, the officer, Mr. Harden, as here, recommended refusal, resulting in a decision that I fully endorse. The parallels to be drawn here by members are overwhelmingly compelling. That land, further, was not, and this is, publicly accessible. Thank you. I'll speak louder. Thank you. Local plan core strategy. As Councillor Alyssa Moore has already explained, this simply is not an inclusive design. The application will most certainly not make Marlow Way a better place for its residents. It fails you are too. The historic environment assets, the application site is within 100 yards of a scheduled ancient monument. Archaeologist report specifies, in this case, a trial trenched archaeological evaluation will be required, etc., 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 excavation before any groundworks commence. There is an archaeological condition recommended Z00. No work shall take place until the implementation of, implementation of a program of archaeological work has been secured. Excellent, good stuff. However, too late. The tall and attractive buff brick curtain wall that used to form the edge of the green space was smashed down by the developer last month, and the resultant rubble and hardcore from it ground into the site. No chance of any archaeological evaluation now, members. Application fails DP14. Mr Cairns very kindly confirmed to me that no one in CBC had given the developer permission for these works to be carried out. I therefore asked for it to be enforced and the wall reinstated immediately. I was informed that no one would do anything about that as it was perfectly acceptable conduct. Indeed, thank you, Chairman, you've mentioned that to me. Thank you, Frankly, but, thank you very as much, a lawyer, Councillor Buston. I disagree. Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Councillor Buston. Mr. Harden, are you able to, um, before I throw it open to the committee, is there anything there that you wish to comment on? Uh, yes, just a couple of comments really, Chairman. Uh, yes, I would reiterate that the well-used phrase, finely balanced, I think it is very finely balanced. And you can argue that you know, you're losing an open space and views of Lexton Manor. On the other hand, as I've said, it's not listed or locally listed. It's a relatively small frontage of open space and quite a lot of it is being retained. But it is a judgment and I um, appreciate, you know, there is a lot of concern for this scheme. So it is, it is, it is something that needs to be looked at very closely um, as we have done. And in terms of design and scale, just to reiterate what I've said, yes, it is uh, different to the surroundings. Um, I think the question is, in the current design standards now, would we want to uh, go for a repeat of what is um, surrounding the site, or would we want to go for a slightly different scheme that uh, gives a bit more of a contemporary appearance to this part of uh, the estate and in front of uh, Lexton Manor? I mean, that is a judgment. Our view is that um, what they're proposing 
is acceptable in the street scene and, and not enough to warrant a refusal. But again, it is a judgment. It does differ from its surroundings. Um, so members will have to consider that closely and see what their view is on that. Um, just in terms of the uh, point made about the, the loss of the wall, uh, as we've said, it's, uh, it's not something that uh, is something that we could control. It does not require planning permission to demolish that wall. So it's not a judgment as to whether we take action or not. It's a fact that we can't take action because it's not uh, something that requires planning permission. Um, and there was reference to another site that was recently refused at uh, Highfield Drive, which was one of my cases. Um, there are similarities to that site. That was at Highfield Drive. Um, and in that case, we took the view that that open space uh, provided more of a benefit to the environment uh, in that particular context than this current open space. And that building on the vast majority of that open space at Highfield Drive would actually undermine the character of that area and had been backed up on appeal. Um, this case is, has to be judged on its merits. It has similarities, but again, it is different in that a lot of the openness at the frontage would be retained in terms of grassed areas, uh, setting the dwellings back and retaining the trees and with a condition that there shall be no frontage fencing. So it is a judgment again, and we're fully aware of the sensitivity of the site and the surroundings. So, uh, and just finally, in terms of the archaeological point made, um, I think removal of that wall uh, doesn't mean you can't have an archaeological investigation on the site if required, and that would be conditioned if the application is approved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Harden. Um, Councillor Chillingworth. Thank you, Chairman. I think the point which we must look at very carefully is the comment from the planning officer, finally balanced. I feel that local residents have a great stake in their environment. And I think we ignore their views. Uh, we shouldn't ignore their views. Therefore, I listen to their comments very carefully. Now, my personal view, having seen the plans and the similar houses built elsewhere, I don't like them, but they are a modern design. And if they were a varied design, I think that would be an improvement. But to have three similar, rather bleak designs, in my view, I don't like it. I think it will spoil the environment there. And I, I'm looking for a way of turning this down. Finally balanced. That means, I think, if we were to turn it down, we have a 50-50 chance of winning on an appeal. We are unlikely in those circumstances, if the local plan policies are finally balanced, to lose and get costs against us. Fair enough, if we lose, we lose. But I think it's worthwhile taking the risk. And for the moment, I, I will leave it there, but I, I'm not happy with the scheme. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was very concerned to hear that the glazing on the side and the back was not opening and obscured. After going through what we have the last 18 months, people have a right to enjoy their homes. Um, and this concerns me to have building regulations like they are today when the houses are so hot and then you have no chance of opening a window, I don't think is right. Um, it's conditioned you know, on Article 15 for obscure glazing, but 
I really do wonder if we could, if we actually can impose that in this day and age. And we're concerned with the overlooking. So these new properties will not be, be able to overlook the manor house, but the manor house can overlook their properties, you know, their gardens. There is, you know, there is absolutely no privacy. Would they be able to plant trees in that back garden that could go over quite a height to actually give them the cover they need? I don't know if that's going to be a condition they can't have. Um, so I think we need to be very mindful of this, that, you know, we're going to be creating a property that I don't think is fit for purpose for a young family um, if you cannot open the windows and it's if you've got the heat on the property. So I'm, I would like to have some answers on that one, please. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Um, in regard to the manor overlooking, it already does overlook properties in that area. Um, I share your view about the uh, obscure glazing and non-opening windows. I think that is completely wrong. I hate it. And I wonder if the reason for that is that those properties are in fact too close to uh, the manor. Um, but perhaps Mr. Harden can actually um, explain that to us. We've heard about the green space um, that it, uh, Mr. Pomery says it is not public open space. So therefore, who owned that, that space? Who owns it now? Presumably it's the manor. Have they always owned it? Um, you know, there's lots of questions as to why it might have been left open, but I would like that answered. Um, what other questions did I have? I had quite a few actually. Um, oh, and the design. Um, I absolutely loathe the design. It's subjective, I know, but I loathe it. And the fact that they have it in Braiswick, well, poor Braiswick. Um, I think it's a, I think an architect could do so much better if there was an application for housing in this space. A much better design could be brought forward. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Chillingworth that uh, if we can refuse this, I would like to see it refused mainly for me on the grounds of design and um, the closeness to the manor. If, um, Mr. Harden or Mr. Cairns, if we were to refuse on the grounds of design, I'm assuming that is a relevant uh, material planning ground for um, refusal. It is a pity because um, I don't have any what, I don't have any real anything really against something being built in that spot, but I just think this is the wrong uh, design um, in this area. Um, and we've heard that all the properties are similar. So to suddenly stick three very different properties and then propose that one in the middle might be different again alarms me, quite frankly. Um, I don't think it would help at all. Um, I was pleased to see um, solar panels on solar on the roof, but would that be solar tiling rather than panels? Because solar panels can be pretty ugly, whereas the modern form of solar tiling is far better. But um, committee, do we have any other comments on this? Councillor Hagen. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's, this is an interesting one because actually part of me thinks, oh, I like the design of these houses. I like modern looking buildings and, and I think they look quite nice. Uh, would they look nice a mile away? No. Um, 1.8 meters high, that's, that's higher than the houses next door. I think that's quite substantial and that needs to be looked at. Um, you've got to look at the surroundings. I'm just wondering whether or not the developers have actually, um, you know, or the architects, actually visited the site and said we're going to design something in keeping. Uh, we looked at the uh, an example of the house elsewhere. Is it just the same plans just thrown into Marlow Way? That will do or save us some money. I would ask a question on the green space. Two questions. Um, is there a right of access across the highway? And if there isn't, then how did they get rid of the bricks? Because did it go one way or the other? Um, so there should be, should be some enforcement there. 
And secondly, who's been maintaining that green space all these years? The, uh, the locals, local residents, um, have said that that's been enjoyed by many people for, for you know, a long time. Obviously, the grass isn't 20 foot tall, so it has been cut over time, it has been maintained. I'd like to know who's been maintaining that, if that's Essex County Council under contract. I think we should have that information. And if it is Essex County Council, is there a right of ownership transfer, uh, thus not being allowed to continue unless that's been looked at in greater detail? I know a lot of the properties around there also have restricted covenants. So I'd like to know if there's any restricted covenants on the grounds of the manor house and whether or not they have been ignored in light of the additional uh, planning application that's gone through. Um, I, I'm one for not overdeveloping, but I will say, you know, these, the house numbering schema that's in place, uh, you know, properties uh, proposed are between seven and 15. So perhaps the original plan there was to have a nine, 11 and a 13. Why weren't they built originally? I'd like to know the answers to that before I can make any, any forward comment um, on, uh, on agreeing the plans personally. Uh, if, if we do go ahead on the plans and they are proposed to be accepted this evening, I'd also like to have some restriction put on uh, the garages being converted. Um, I, I don't know if that's possible to do, so they, they have to remain a garage. Um, it's absolutely imperative that we stop people parking all over the pathways, the roads, special ed interventions. We've seen it at the developments, we commented it on an earlier application, and we all know the frustrations with that, the frustrations with that, the money that's taxpayers, that's right, the right to pothole in the pathway, and then tap 60 to 18 still vote to get it done because it's not her priority, and that's something that we need to stop maintaining the building, not just burn it out, not just burn it out. The design. The design, the design is similar to the other house, similar to the other house, and then I could do a little bit more and, and, and bring it back and, 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 and just look at the houses now and, and, and say, you know what, I'm going to burn something, I'm going to propose something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, keeping with the other properties, and actually, you know what, as I can actually put the other residents together and say, give me some ideas, and then come back to the table and come back to the table. Against the houses going in there, I think every new family, new family should have the opportunity to, to live in a unique area, such as my own way, and this is a unique opportunity, but again, I don't know it's right right now, personally. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Chair. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, like the actual um, modern design. However, I do have concerns about the height of the ridge. I think 1.3 metres above um, what's already there is quite tall. Um, another concern is that it talks about in the report that um, whilst there will be some views lost, um, we'll there will be an opportunity to still view the manor in between the actual proposed dwellings. Um, and my concern is that if, if, um, if, the, if it's not nailed down that the garages cannot be converted at a later date, then you could end up with offset parking out of the front, which will, which will then park cars at an angle interrupting the views that are supposed to be kept in between, um, um, supposed to be kept of the manor. And therefore, I think it's important that the garages are a size that they can properly be considered a garage. And I raise this from actual um, experience within my own ward, where some properties were provided with a parking space, but as it turned out, 
you could get your car in it, but you couldn't get out of the car. And so when somebody came back later, in planning terms, wanting to convert that space, the officers advised me they were unable to actually turn it down because it wasn't actually um, a properly proportioned garage space. So I do think it's important that the plans do do present as uh, as garage spaces that can properly be used as garages, and therefore any um, any condition that prevents those garages from then being converted into living space later stands more chance of then being upheld, and then that then negates what would then be a perceived desire to want to add in a parking space in uh, in the in the green space in the front garden. So that's my concern. The other thing is that there were some heavyweight challenges made by local councillors, um, quoting quite freely various policies. Um, and I wondered if, if, if we could be assured that these plans do conform with the MPP 12, 14, and DP 12s and 14s and, and UR2 core strategies because there's a pretty strong challenge from councillors that they didn't. So I would like to see that properly addressed in some detail. Thank you, Councillor Warns. Councillor Lilly. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, if, if only that uh, all our applications had that little ghetto clause of finally uh, divided or whatever it was, um, we would use it, wouldn't we, and, and, and protest and, and see a way of getting a, a refusal. Um, I, th I actually quite like the, I do like the design. I, I agree with the, the, disagree with the chair in that, but I don't like three houses in that small space as such. And um, it is three stories. There's no doubt about that because there, there is going to be a, a living accommodation on the top of that. And it does seem to be quite high for the area. Um, it does seem to be an overdevelopment as such in there. Um, and what concerns me is the, the green space outside. We've seen that the green space is going to be punctuated by driveways. And you know all too well that when people come home in their cars, will they drive all the way up to the, the entrance or will they just leave it on their driveway in between the green space out there ready to go the next morning? And if the garages are full, filled with, with household junk, such as most garages are, so it's no longer used as a garage, they suddenly find themselves one one car short and they have to park outside. So it, it does worry me that there is a loss of green space to the area because it is going to be cut up by tarmac. Uh, and I hate to see that. I, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about it. it. In a way, it has got some merits with the fact that the, the fantastic eco um, projects inside of it with the solar panels and the gas pump um, heating that's got a lot going for it, but I'm in two minds about it, really, and I think it is just too much crammed in to such a small site. Um, I don't think the loss of the wall is a, is a great issue. I think it looks horrible. It looks like the Berlin Wall, somebody living behind that. But, um, yeah, I'm in two minds over this application, and part of me wants to to refuse it because it does look that. And Councillor Warns is right. Councillor Lissamore reeled off an impressive uh, um, a display of, of knowledge of plan and uh, designs and reference numbers. And, and she was very convincing in that. So I would like to hear, as my colleague here on the left would say, that we, we want to make sure that Councillor Lissamore has got it right. And if she has got it right, then we've got grounds to turn this down on everything that she stated. So I'd like to hear uh, officers' opinion of what Councillor Lismore um, quoted in there. And, um, and she was quite impressive in her, in her display. 
tonight. So, yeah, I'd like to hear what um, officers have to say about all those conditions and references, please. Thank you, Councillor Lilly. Um, in regard to garages, um, almost no modern garages will house a modern car. Um, for many years, I have complained at the size of the garages. You can't get a car in them, even a small one, unless you've got a smart car or something. And of course, because the houses are built with virtually no storage space, they are used for storage. We've had this problem on other estates where people have sought to, the garage, to turn the garage into a room, they apply for planning permission, and most often they actually get it. So garages are a, they are a concern, and whether or not we can absolutely say we want a garage, garages that are actually big enough to house a, a modern car, or whether we can actually nail down uh, the fact that they will never be allowed to become a room, I doubt. Um, but Count, uh, Mr. Harden, you've got an awful lot of questions we've put to you. We, if you would be kind enough to uh, plough through them, please. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'll just go through them uh, one by one, really. Um, so, uh, Let's see. Um, yes, yeah, so Councillor Chillingworth did comment about the, the three-storey elements and that it uh, would spoil the environment. Um, again, in, in terms of design and scale, I say it is a judgment. Um, there are other options to put uh, differently designed dwellings there and on a smaller scale. Um, you could sort of replicate the, the 70s style form of dwelling or you could go for a more contemporary design. Uh, these are sort of a mixed traditional stroke contemporary or you could go for something very vernacular with a very plain sort of um, frontage. Um, so there are various options but I think the key thing in terms of design is the judgment as to uh, the how it relates to the character of the surroundings. I don't think you could say it's poor design. I would say that you could you could argue that if you wanted to refuse it on design grounds, you could say it's out of keeping with the character of the area. So I would advise against refusing it on poor design, but you could say it differs so significantly that you don't think it's uh, in keeping with the character of the area. Um, but then would you replicate the 60s, 70s type of character where you have a lot of integral garages, garages forward of the building line, or do you go for a a sort of a step forward in that respect and make them a bit more traditional in terms of you don't have integral garages, you have side attached garages, plain fenestration, narrow gables, um, that sort of thing without the, the frontage flat roofed elements. So there are various ways of achieving that. Um, and I think uh, in terms of the reference to the appeal chances, I will say it again, it's finely balanced. We do need to consider that it's a sustainable location. There is a presumption in favour of um, sustainable development. So if it is finely balanced, then you should go for a positive recommendation. On appeal, I would say it's unlikely you would get costs against you. Um, I would say chances of winning the appeal, Councillor Chillingworth said 50-50. I would say chances are slightly less than that, but it's very difficult to put a figure on it. It's um, it's one where the inspector would look at all the points people have made and make his judgment having viewed at the site. But I think it could go either way on appeal. That was, that's my honest opinion. Um, in terms of the comments made by Councillor McLean, uh, yep, the, the windows will be obscure glazed. You can have the high level opening um, elements of the windows. So it'd only be obscure glazed and non opening up to 1.7 above floor level. So you can have openings above that to get ventilation into uh, the rooms. Um, and that, that would avoid overlooking, but uh, you could still have the ventilation. You could also have planting of trees to the rear boundaries of probably both properties. Alexa Management Manor would probably want tree planting and these new properties would probably plant some trees as a lot of developments do, you know, in very uh, similar schemes. Um, uh, let's see, the next comment, uh, Councillor Hazel, um, 
loathe the design. Um, I think it's clear that uh, some people like the design, others loathe it, others uh, think it's an okay design, but it's not appropriate for the location. So again, it is a judgment. Uh, my view is uh, uh, in the report that um, I think in this context it would be appropriate, but you know, it is a judgment and I think the design concerns raised are legitimate, but I would focus on the impact on the character of the surroundings rather than the design element itself. Um, I think in terms of closest to the manor, distances are acceptable, but uh, you would want the obscure glazing condition high level as uh, indicated uh, in the condition. Um, Councillor Hayden, um, again a, a judgment in terms of the impact on the surroundings. Um, I don't know about the right of way to access onto the site. Um, so that's what, one point I don't know the answer to. Um, and also, I can't give a definitive view as to who's been maintaining that land over the years. I think it's been publicly maintained, but I can't uh, guarantee that. But certainly it's been bought privately and is no longer, uh, you know, public land. Um, we had a query yesterday from Councillor Hayden about uh, was the original uh, development showing properties in that location. We've searched uh, our records um, and I must admit we haven't found the answer to that yet. There are probably about uh, 200 slides to go through so I can't give you an answer on that. I've gone through about 50 of them. They show the overall development but they haven't uh, gleaned the layout as such yet so I can't give the answer as to whether there were three on there or not, or whether there were covenants. Um, covenants would overrule a planning decision, so we could potentially grant approval, but if there's a covenant, then that means you know you couldn't implement the, uh, the um, approval. So uh, that wouldn't necessarily rule out granting permission, but it could over, overrule the opportunity to implement. But I don't know if there is a covenant or not. I suspect um, areas, Part of that site was bought by Lexton Manor and they didn't want to develop it, but I certainly can't guarantee that. That's just speculating, basically. Um, and yes, a comment was made about uh, by Councillor Hayden about the design. Um, there would be an opportunity to have a simpler design. I uh, could potentially agree to that comment. Um, obviously, you've got what is in front of you. Um, it wasn't considered justification to refuse it, refuse it on design grounds, but there are always other options. You could have a simpler, ne nevertheless contemporary form of design. Um, what I would say is if, and I'll go through the other comments, if there is going to be an overriding uh, recommendation for refusal, um, I think we need to be entirely clear about what we're refusing it on. Is it going to be design, scale and form? Is it going to be loss of um, views of the manor, loss of open space? So if we could be very clear of exactly how many items we want to refuse it on, then that, that would uh, be very helpful if you do go that way, which it looks like you may well be doing. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, the garage conversions, we can condition it so that um, they are retained for uh, in a parking provision. People do use garaging for um, other things, they even infill the garage doors, but there can be a condition to do that. But nevertheless, you have got other parking space available on the site. Um, so it would be policy compliant, even if you did lose the garage. Um, Yes, and Councillor Lissamore's comments, it is a judgment in terms of design. Um, the Essex Design Guide does promote a variety of designs and the National Planning Policy Framework does promote a variety of designs and, and in some areas encourages contemporary design, but it is a judgment in terms of the context. Again, what I would say is we have probably moved on from the designs that are shown uh, in the 70s and 80s in terms of wide gables, integral garages, forward projecting uh, garages. Um, they do still give a, 
a good environment, and particularly when they're spaciously laid out, but nevertheless, that sort of design is not normally promoted in the design guides nowadays. They tend to either focus on contemporary designs or going back to potentially more traditional design, you know, Victorian, Edwardian, traditional um, gable widths and heights. But, you know, it is a contextual consideration. So again, it is a judgment. So the, the comments from Council Lissamore are, are very valid. Um, I think that uh, probably covers things, but if there's anything else you want me to uh, cover, then uh, please let me know. Um, are you able to um, answer my question about the green sward at the front gardens? Presumably, you see that the frontage, the gardens will be open but they won't be public space, will they? They'll be the occupant's front gardens. But who owned that? Um, I mean, did the manor, did whoever owns the manor now buy that, buy that strip of land? And one wonders why, if it was owned by the original owners of the manor, why they put a brick wall and left that space open? It would be quite interesting to know who owns that land and um, the fact that it isn't actually public open space. Uh, yes, Chair, and I think I commented on that, um, but essentially I believe it was publicly owned until it was bought by the manor, but that is, I can't guarantee that, but that, from um, the comments submitted, it seems to be that it was publicly owned, certainly at one point, and publicly maintained, but has now been bought by the manor. But I, uh, I'm going on comments received rather than um, sort of in-depth investigation of that, but certainly it's shown in the red line as now being owned by the manor. Um, and I think Robert Pomeroy indicated that um, it did become available to be bought and was bought and then this has led to a windfall site, basically. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hagen. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, we're sitting here debating a planning application on property that we don't know who it belongs to, but it's sold, but it was public property and maintained by public finances, and then it was sold to someone that we're not too sure when or how, and people can build on it and go over it and all sorts. It seems a little bit, I don't know, how can we make a decision on, on it, you know, saying yes to this if we're actually not sure whether the land is publicly owned. I mean, what's going to happen next? We can just go out and, oh, there's a public field over there. I'm going to build a house. I mean, is that what we're going to do next? I mean, maybe you can answer that, please. Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, it's not publicly owned now. Um, it's been bought by Lexton Manor. So I think you, you, who did they buy it off? And if they bought it off, of, oh, if they bought it off, um, if they bought it off CBC or Essex County Council, whoever's been owning it, maybe someone can clarify that. I mean, where's the, where's the paper trail for that? Where's the money in the bank? Mr. Cairns, would you like to answer that, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I have hearsay uh, knowledge that apparently it was bought off the original developers. Um, the issue of whether there has been um, adverse possession acquired or um, prescriptive rights in terms of long-term public ownership is a moot point that members may or may, may not wish to consider. Clearly, if the public have had unrestricted access for that site, to that site as Council Buston, I think, raised, there may be issues of um, prescriptive rights that may entitle the public to continue using that site. However, um, I don't think that is a planning matter. I think that is a civil law matter, which would have to be pursued uh, independently um, of the planning merits of the case um, before us now. Um, I think, as Chris has outlined, the, and uh, Councillor Lissamore drew attention to, the, the, the main planning consideration here, given the location of the site, is one of um, character and whether the character of the proposed development um, would result in material harm, and that is probably what's um, at the heart of the, uh, the planning decision before you. Um, in terms of the plot sizes, I think as Chris has demonstrated um, by reference to the surrounding development, these plot sizes are very similar to those that uh, adjoin the site. So it isn't one of density or 
or um, overdevelopment um, per se, unless the dwelling units you consider to be so um, overly scaled that uh, they constitute in themselves overdevelopment. The plots in themselves would appear, certainly to me, to accord with the uh, surrounding plots in the immediate, immediate area. I hope that uh, helps at all. Yes, it does. Thank you very much, Mr. Cairns. Councillor Warns. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, what's in my mind is I, I can hear that some members are minded to want to turn this down. So what I need to know from the officers is whether the risks on appeal are considered low or whether they're considered significant and, and more research is required because that will have a bearing on the way that I would vote. Mr. Harden, are you able to uh, comment on that? Uh, yes. In terms of appeal, I, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, I think it, it could go either way on appeal. And I think um, I, can, I personally would see it highly unlikely that uh, there would be costs against the council because um, you know, if it was refused, I don't think you'd be seen to be acting unreasonably. You would have used your judgment to uh, determine that in this context, you did not uh, think the scheme was appropriate. Um, what I would say is that if you're going to form a refusal reason, we need to be clear precisely how much you're refusing it on. Is it going to be design, scale and form, uh, plus loss of open space, plus um, impact on the setting of Lexton Manor. If we have vague reasons, then you do risk um, getting a problem at appeal. So I think we would need to be very clear on uh, how much you would like to refuse it on if that's the way you're going um, in terms of design, disease, detailing, scale form, impact on setting, loss of open space. So, um, and on appeal, I would say it is it's, it's so finely balanced again. Um, I must admit, uh, when I've refused applications at uh, Cogster Borough in five years, I've only lost one appeal myself, um, and that was on parking grounds. Um, but obviously, those are cases where I'd recommend refusal. I'm recommending approval here, so, it, um, so it's a bit of a different issue, and I really think it, it would be a very close call on appeal. But um, you know, you would have an, a justification to make your own decision and see, see how it went to the peer, unlikely to get costs against you, I would say, providing uh, the reason is not vague. Thank you, Mr Harden. I mean, I do agree with Councillor Chillingworth in this regard that um, it's worth risking um, costs. I, I agree. I don't think we would be awarded costs, but in this case, it is worth risking. Could you advise on if we turn this down on sufficient grounds, the design and so on and so forth, and then the applicant goes away and comes back with a better design? It, they have a right to build on that space. Is that what we're? Is that what you're saying that um, one way or another? houses will be built there, we just need to get the design right. Is, is that my take on it, uh, correct? Um, well, it depends what you would want to refuse it on. If you refuse it purely on design scale grounds, then that is sort of indicating that you're not too worried about the loss of the open space or the impact on the setting of Lexton Manor. If you refuse it on the grounds of loss of open space as well, you could send a message that you don't want to de be developed at all. Um, it's in the settlement limits, so it is a judge on its planning merits. It's privately owned land. Um, so it, it, it really would be a judgment. Do you want to say no development? Um, do you think potentially, could you have one dwelling on there? Would you be happy with two? Would that affect the setting of Lexton Manor? So the refusal reason is key as to what could potentially come forward. If it's a very strong refusal reason saying it's a loss of open space and, and you wouldn't want any development on there, then make that clear now. If that's not clear, the applicant could potentially come back and say, well, oh, can we have two or three of a different design? So 
that's why I think it's important to give a, a steer now as to what the overall feeling is. It may be that um, you think it's acceptable to develop on the site, but a smaller number or a smaller scale and different designs. So I think that's probably what we need to be clear. If you refuse it on loss of open space and and you're not happy with any development on there, then that obviously sends a message that we wouldn't want another application in. So it, it is a judgment really as to how much you want to refuse it on. So the fact that the land is privately owned doesn't carry with it a right to develop? It's a, well, it's a judgment on its merits. They've got the right to apply. There is a presumption in favour of sustainable development on, you know, on land which, uh, which is within the settlement limits. So there's a presumption in favour of it. That doesn't mean you can develop it because it might be that you deem the site is not appropriate to develop because of loss of open space, setting of Lexton Manor. So it's a judge on its merits, basically. They've got the right to apply. It's not public open space in planning terms. Um, as Simon said, there could be a civil uh, issue where it could be claimed that it's had public use um, but that, that's not really a sort of a planning consideration. It's something that could overrule a planning permission in the future. Hopefully that answers that. Thank you, Mr. Harden. Councillor Chillingworth and then Councillor Warns. Thank you, Chairman. Personally, I feel that this site will be developed and that the committee uh, should allow it to be uh, uh, developed in an appropriate way, which is in keeping with the surrounding area. I, I would like to make a proposal that the committee is minded to turn this down on the basis of it being out of keeping with the character of the area and the design and scale and form isn't appropriate and leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chillingworth. Councillor Warns. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I'm not against any development on this site. Um, and as I've stated, I quite like the designs. I don't like the heights over and above the ridge. Um, I've mentioned the points of our garages um, being converted, but um, on page 181 of the agenda, where it talks about, um, about reasons to refuse. It says that the planning system is designed to manage development, facilitating not obstructing sustainable development of a satisfactory standard. Um, and it also goes on to say that regarding the appropriate use of conditions, when decision makers make themselves vulnerable to costs being awarded against them due to unreasonable behaviour, and they have to be seen to have, to have acted unreasonably at appeal, which could include a lack of cooperation with the applicants. So I'm just wondering whether there is an opportunity to go back to the applicants and ask whether they're willing to bring something forward, which is more in keeping with the views expressed here by the committee tonight before we outrightly refuse and then put ourselves at risk of costs. If, on the other hand, and I still hasn't been made plain to me, the word finely balanced has been used many times tonight. I asked whether the risks were low of us losing an appeal and therefore open to costs. And if the risks are low, then I would fall on the side of what Councillor Chillingworth is saying. But if the risks are significant or there's a case for further research, then I think then deferring it and giving the applicant a chance to come back with something more in keeping with our wishes is probably a better move. Thank you, Council Warns. I mean, personally, um, I think we should not put too much emphasis on costs. If something is right to be done by the public, then we need to do it and we have to take that hit if costs are awarded. So again, it is a judgment call. Um, Mr. Cairns, you can see we are in a dilemma. We have, sorry, Councillor McLean, I'll, I'll come to you next. We have the um, 
proposal by Councillor Chillingworth, which is to refuse and then to uh, wait to see what the developer comes back with in the future, or whether we defer as Councillor Warns is saying. I don't know how the committee is feeling about one or t'other. Um, are you able to comment? I'll come to you afterwards, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, in terms of the risk, I think it is an extremely low risk of costs being awarded. Um, the matters you're considering are perfectly valid planning considerations um, in the context of the application, so that's absolutely fine. Um, I think you have a variety of options before you, whether you simply object to the design and not the principle, in which case um, you could make that a single reason for refusal, and indeed you could almost add an informative to say the Council would consider um, you know, appropriate designs will wish to engage in, in uh, dialogue to achieve an appropriate design. Um, if you consider that the principle is also unacceptable, I think you could have a further reason for refusal relating to the loss uh, of the uh, visual amenity provided by the application site within the street scene. And that is also open to you to consider. Um, in terms of that particular fact, I think I would only make the point that if one looks at the position of the wall and the open space in front of the wall, the building line that is now proposed more or less aligns with the wall um, alignment. So in terms of the green space in front of the built form, it would be apart from the driveways, as Councillor Lilly identified, uh, which would bisect that space, it would otherwise remain open. Um, so that is a matter for you to consider in the planning balance. Um, in the planning balance of refusal, I think you should consider the um, public benefit of three additional dwellings um, against the harm that you have identified or, or are considering um, what that would flow from the development uh, that uh, you have identified in terms of the detailed design and or the principle of development. And that is something for you to weigh up and decide whether it justifies the refusal um, on the ground solely of design or on the design and the principle vis-a-vis -vis the loss of the public immunity um, within the street scene, even if that is just a visual one. Thank you, Mr. Cairns. Councillor McLean. Well, after what uh, Mr. Cairns has said, I would like to support um, Peter, Councillor Chingworth's proposal. Um, with the view and taking on board what Simon Cairns has said with the design and the open space. Um, given that we have um, this proposal that we can um, just refute it on the grounds of design and um, those other terms that we mentioned that uh, Mr Harden laid out for us, we can do that. But we also have the option before us to refuse completely. So I'm thinking we need perhaps two. Um, sorry. It, I'm just going to say Councillor Chillingworth's proposal was the first one. So yes, indeed. Need... Yes, indeed. But I, I just wonder if we then will have a second um, proposal to refuse completely. And if I were to propose that to, to refuse completely, would I have a seconder? Chair, can I ask for some clarity on your proposal? Yes, that we that we refuse this application in total, that, there, that we do not want any development, we do not want any design there, we want that space kept as open space. So therefore you are objecting to the principle? Yes. Oh, sorry, yes. yes. Okay, Chair, um, that's something I cannot support. Thank you. Um, could, could I have an... Councillor Lilly. I think that um, your, your proposal is probably just too far, to be honest. Okay. I'm not comfortable with the design or the open space issue because it's been stated they purchased the land and that's why they brought the application here. But I think Councillor Chillingworth's uh, proposal has got it right for us, but as you say, it will probably lead to another application being put in there. But then we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it, I believe. And where we are tonight with this application, I don't believe there's enough grounds for us on your proposal, Chair, but 
uh, hard support. Councillor the Chilling Wife's uh, proposal. Thank you very much, Councillor Lilly. Um, I, I just felt I needed to offer that option to you. Um, and it is clear um, that uh, the committee does not wish to refuse the principle. So um, if we go now to um, the proposal, uh, Councillor Chillingworth, can you read that out again? Uh, well, <clears throat> because we don't want to um, stop development entirely, I I'm saying this proposal, this proposal is out of keeping with the character of the area. And therefore the design and scale and form is wrong and we're turning it down on that basis and obviously we would welcome <laughs> this is not part of the proposal but we would welcome a much more uh, 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 proposal in character with the area so is that enough <laughs> sorry is that enough mr cairns will, will that thank you chair yes i mean if you're happy to delegate um the detailed wording to officers we can obviously relate that to the relevant local plan and national policies that Councillor Lissamore referred to um, in her representation. Thank you very much. So um, we'll go to the vote. All in, all those in favour of Councillor Chillingworth's proposal. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. So uh, ladies and gentlemen of the public who've spent such a long time here waiting, um, we have turned down this particular proposal, but um, almost certainly another one will come before us, which I hope and trust will be far more acceptable. So thank you for your patience and thank you members and officers too. Thank you very much. Recording stopped.